Live on Stream It Sports and PSD Channel 10, it's Pooter School District High School Football. This broadcast is brought to you by Schrader Oil, your local fuel company. By University of Colorado Health, we improve lives from health care to health. By Peterson Toyota, everything cars made easy. And by First Bank, visit any of our convenient locations in northern Colorado. And now for the play-by-play, -play, here's David Haas and Randy McCoy. Welcome, folks. Thursday night football, French Field in Fort Collins, Colorado. Randy McCoy, David Haas here with you. We have the Loveland Indians coming to French Field and uh, to play the Fort Collins Lampkins. About 10 minutes before game time, getting ready for the Lampkins to come out. And, uh, Dave, we've got a nice, cool evening, and I think tomorrow night's game we're going to have a little moisture from we what I see. We might get a little weather for the first time this year, but we've been pretty blessed to have uh, great weather for uh, all the fans. But, uh, you know, football players don't mind playing in inclement weather. No, That's kind of fun. No, they don't. So tonight's game, a couple of teams that are uh, really needing a victory, 2-2 two and two, Loveland, 1-3 and three, Fort Collins and the Lampkins desperately needing a victory really by any means as we read a nice uh, preview by Kevin Lytle really whatever it takes they need a win don't they yeah and sometimes uh, that's the one team in town I think you could count on for being that kind of a scrappy unit coach Rice and his staff uh, uh, coach them up pretty good every year but this is probably going to be one of the toughest years they've had you replace a lot of experience they lost off that last that squad last year that was so talented and had such a great year and looking up at uh, three losses from one win and for them is a uh, very uncharacteristic so we'll see you tonight if they get a chance to uh, get healthy, as they say, and get a little confidence back. But that is so much of it. And uh, it's a non-conference game, so it won't really kill you in the standings that way if you lose here. But you, you just need this to start getting some rhythm back. Offensively, they've had very little output this year. Uh, their defense is on the field a long time. They've run into some pretty good teams uh, already. And uh, it will be a, uh, you know, a night where they get to define what the rest of their season could be. And for the Loveland Indians, really, it all uh, starts and stops with Aiden Everhart. Yeah, if you look at the stats on that young man, uh, he's carrying a team right now on his back, both uh, with the ball through the air and on the ground. He leads the team in both passing <clears throat> and rushing, and uh, that's, a, that's a tough thing to do from the quarterback position to stay healthy at, too. Um, he does have some... You know, other others that are there's picking up the low, but he really has the most carries, and obviously through the air, he gains the yards that way too. So we're just about ready here for the national anthem. Got the Lampkin marching band in the house tonight. Forgive our scratchy throats. Yes, we've both been struggling. As Loveland is a uh, town just south of Fort Collins, and actually, you really can't tell when you leave. Fort Any Collins and Enter Loveland. Yeah. So they're kind of together. A lot of the airports called the Fort Collins Loveland Airport. So this is, in essence, a uh, cross town rivalry, yeah, really, game, really in a sense. Well, and, and as we've talked about so many times before about the, the local schools in the Poudre School District, uh, these kids play each other. Well, the Loveland schools have those kids out playing at the same time, too. Yeah. And uh, they are part of that. Uh, um, progression through the middle school teams, the club teams, and everything. Yes, they are. And Loveland plays 4A in football, but they play 5A, uh, I think, in most everything yes, else. Yes, they do. So specifically yep. basketball, I know. They're exactly like Fort Collins. And so you got a couple of uh, mi middle-sized high schools, really, is what you've got. And, uh, probably the earliest high schools in each perspective city. Oh, yeah, they've both been around for quite a long time. Loveland's been you know, a former state champ. They've had a great success in football back in the, the days where uh, you know they, they had just prolific offenses, and there's some of the names that have carried over over the years. But well, right the now, former, the K-State quarterback that just uh, yep. is, the name is escaping me right now. But, yeah, I just did that too. Uh, the McLuhan boys down there both had uh, one on. Dave McLuhan, who's got a son on this team, and uh, at CU and then the NFL. So the pedigree is there. The, they've had the tradition before, but <clears throat> like tonight, they may look at this as a game. Well, here's a team that's struggling. we got to take advantage when they can. There's been a lot of years when people didn't do, didn't do well against Fort Collins, and if you can get a chance to get back at them, that's what you do in rivalry yeah. games. Yeah, they've had, they've had a few good years here in a row, so there's a lot of teams that wouldn't mind uh, kicking the Lampkins when they're down a little bit. Oh, yeah. Bit. Well, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the way it happens. I just refer to Oregon right now slash University of in the last drubbing they got last weekend. But there's there's a lot of, of fight in that uh, Lampkin bunch. We know that. See their captains coming on the field. We'd like to go ahead and just say right now their their numbers are the 
one of the hardest to read in town again. We've got yeah. the first uh, captain out there, Jacob Moyer, number one. Jack Grauberger, number three. And number four is Kyler Harpum, who may not get to lead the field, and, and even if he wants to. And number 79, Ben Freeman. And there come the Lampkins running uh, onto the field. Several injuries, and that's gonna that's probably one of the smallest varsity squad varsity you're gonna, squad see. You're yeah. gonna see anywhere yeah. right there. Yeah, well he Coach Rice never brings up a lot of younger kids. Some schools uh, will bring in basically everybody that's a body and, and do that pooter and, and, and fossil will bring a lot more kids in the field, just what the coach's discretion would be. But as you're right, as a unit, that's not a big bunch, and it's pretty similar across the way for Loveland too. Loveland's out there, the coin toss is going on. We'll try to get that to you before we have our national anthem. Sometimes as the progression of those things go, they kind of well overlap. We, we, we thought we had it. We thought yeah. in seven minutes was the we national anthem, and we were wrong this time. Yeah, it won't be the last. <laughs> so we apologize. We've got to get some messages in from our sponsors and the national anthem, so we will do our very best to, to do that in a timely manner. Coin flip just happening. Looks like Collins won the decision. They are going to defer, as so often is the case that, in football that, now. That seems to be the the sexy choice, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. you want the ball in the third quarter. I think there's a guy that plays for the Broncos that's kind of made that a... Yeah. So we'll score on the last play of the third of the second quarter. Start and, right out again. And the yeah, back first to back play possessions. of the third. So Loveland will be kicking off and, uh, excuse me, receiving on the south end zone. They'll be kicking off from the... North end zone will be Lampkins. And Loveland's traditional red, black, and white. And yep. good looking. Good looking team colors. Uniforms. Like those big solid numbers, too. Yes. And they're big and red. <laughs> Here's the Purple Regiment of Marching Band with our national anthem tonight. Nice job. We'll be back in just a moment. Thanks to First Bank and Apple Pay, I can easily buy stuff using my phone. Thanks to my driverless car, I can't figure out how to change this song. Apple Pay, now at First Bank. Where is the middle of nowhere? You can't find it on a map. There's no looking up its address. And there are no GPS coordinates to punch in or freeway exit signs to take. The fact is, the middle of nowhere is pretty hard to find. And that's just fine with us. Toyota, let's Wayne, go. Wayne, everyone knows by now that Schrader's Country Stores have the best car washes around. They don't need to see you standing in the car wash explaining the undercarriage wash, the rocker panel spray, the protective finish application in the jet dryer. No, Wayne, all you have to do is see the beautiful shine on my nice, clean car. No muss, no fuss, and I'm certainly not all wet. <laughs> you won't get soaked at Schrader Country Store car washes, just shiny clean. I am UC Health. I am UC Health. I'm Pam, and I am UC Health. I find the most rewarding thing about working at University of Colorado Health um, is that the system really truly cares about patients and outcomes. We are sincerely involved and engaged in making sure that our community is as healthy as possible. Our roots run deep at the University of Colorado Health. Share your roots at imuchealth.org. 
So we're back here. Sorry about that. We missed the opening kickoff. Game time is supposed to be 6.15, and they started at 6.14. They, they, they so said we got the ball. We're ready. They went. Missed uh, it by that much. <laughs> yeah, well, Loveland uh, was uh, alertly on a short squib kick attempt by the uh, Lampkins uh, kickoff team. They make that an adventure every time, but uh, covered the ball. Actually went out of bounds at about the 31-yard line. And so, you didn't miss anything. No, nope, Aiden Eberhardt, <laughs> quarterback, back in the pistol. Kind of do everything. The read option gives it to his running back, number five. Side to side there. Gets about five, six yards. Tough yards going up the middle. That's Dunkelman. Dunkelman and, and uh, Eberhardt will be the names that we'll be calling the most tonight, especially the guys that they'll be keying on in that Lampkin defense. Lampkin defense we know out there tonight. Be experienced bunch. McCloskey, Harpum, 10, Thurgood. Thurgood and Shulman both uh, leading the team in tackles with 19 each. Bubble screen the outside. Great up front tackle, though. That, that far side corner came straight across and uh, safety coming through there. Jack Grauberger, number three. We can even hear in the background, if you can tell, that the uh, even the announcers are having a moment's pause, and they say, tackled by, and then uh, what does yeah. that number say? What does that number say? Now, so brings up third and eight, loss of a couple on the play after that uh, great read on that play and tackle by Grauberger. Twins left side, motion back behind the pistol. Back to throw. Looks like he's trying to screen the right side. Throws it over. Cross sniffed out. Great. But there was no blocking out really there, was there? Really slow developing. No sail on that one whatsoever. And actually, the 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 end out there for the uh, Indians just dropped back. It was so obvious. Why is number 84 back behind the line of scrimmage not blocking anybody? I mean, there was a linebacker just trotting out there with him. So gain of five or six on first, first down by uh, Dunkelman. And then loss on the next two plays. Forces a punt. And that's about as good a start as you can get for... For Collins. Yeah, the, the Lampkins need that early confidence and, and see what they can do with it. Good snap, nice low driving punt, turns over, taking it to the 29-yard line. Trying to get that right side, that picket fence. He's got it there if he can make the corner, Randy. It's around the edge, cuts back to open field. It's just a foot race for Kyler Harpin. He's going to win it. Looking at the field, I see no flags, touchdown, Lampkins. And he was not touched, I don't believe. I don't think anybody can prove they actually got a finger on his jersey. And when I said he get that picket fence on this near sideline, boy, they set it up nice, didn't he? And I'm not even sure he ever ran full speed. No, just a, when he just, made the cut, he wasn't he wasn't at full speed. No, he just got away from there, and the only only Indian that had actually a chance near him was uh, Dane Abela, the number 44 back there, and he he just had a bad angle and kind of squeezed it down the sideline too much. And Hyperum, who uh, basically is the kind of the MVP of the last couple games as far as effort and on usage, but uh, that was the uh, that was the play right there. So the field goal attempt, or excuse me, the PAT coming up. Moyer, one of the captains, number one on the hold. Good snap. Kick and brought through. Kick is good. Good. So that's one way to start a game, isn't it? Yeah, well, if you, you, know, you get yourself up, get that breathing right away. And that's Luke, Luke Grabenstein. Uh, number 96 there for the uh, Lampkins on the PAT. Yeah, just uh, the Lampkins need that kind of confidence. So they even got the Lampkin in the uh, south end zone doing some push-ups. If uh, the scoring pace keeps up tonight like that, he's going to have quite a few to do. So next touchdown, uh, Ethan, we'll get a chance to see if he can uh, he can honor that up. I, yeah, we've got, we've see got a Lampkin sighting. Yeah, and... we have a mascot in the house. Tonight that might be a little bit warm. Got a big, another big city game tomorrow night. Pooter and Fossil Ridge. A really big one. Yeah, this is one of those where that, you go that back That actually to, means something, too. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be an important game. Fairly evenly matched teams, I would think. Another short kick. Front side brought on the run, picked up by number 11. He gets the outside, Randy. He's got a lot of way to go, yeah, too. He's got three say. blockers, one man to knock down. Goes around him. If he cuts back inside, he's caught from behind. And a horse collar looks like. Yeah, that's going to be a personal foul at the end because that was a that was a horse collar touchdown saving horse collar. Well, and, and you know I've said this before. It's the first young man I've seen that. Everybody was bunched to the left. Yeah. And he just looked up and said, you know, there's nobody on the right, well, and I'm the, just going to go out there. That's the risk on that sort of a kick too. If you don't get there in time, and uh, number 11 for the Indians, uh, Calvin Kelly took off. One of their leading receivers on the year so far, the 118 yards. And there's your Lampkin sighting. Flexing the guns. Well, he's quite a confident mascot, yeah, too. Yeah. You can tell by the way he walks. So after the big play she, on the punt he, return. She, we're not sure. Just mascot. Mascot. Gender neutral. Yeah. Stick with that. 
But uh, yeah, big play downtown. So now snapping the ball from the 33 of the Lampkins. What a, what a play and what a penalty at the end of it. Two backs surrounding the quarterback now. Tight right, tight left, both. We'll run formation next. The quarterback takes off left. Oh, he put it there. If he could, that's one Randy Fita pitched it out there. His running back already had room, but you can see he was looking forward. And because uh, he'll, he'll go back to huddle right there. And number five, Dunkelman is going to say, uh, "Give me the ball. Give me the ball." Well, we're going to we're going to figure out the quarterback we're talking about that was a star for K State in the last three, two, three years. Yeah. Came from Loveland because yeah. he reminds me a lot of that. Yeah, six foot two, runs Young well, man, throws although well. He was six six, I believe. Yeah, he ended up, well, he, he was one of those kids at college that filled out quite a lot. Snap might have been some motion on the play. Dunkelman takes it upfield, gain of about two or three. He's gonna bring about third and five. Kind of even that tweener world for most high schools where it's a little short to be punting inside the thirty, but maybe outside of the field goal range. Although I saw their kicker out before the game, had some pretty long practice attempts. So third and about six now. Eberhardt in the pistol. Dunkelman behind him, rolls to his right. Rolls right into the blitz package, just getting rid of the ball on the outside. Almost caught for first down yardage. Shows a pretty good arm for running away. But uh, Fort Collins came up and put pressure on him. He had to get rid of that right away. So brings up fourth and six. I don't see anybody coming from the outside. Uh, or uh, Come over, look like doing any punt formation. Randy, some of the numbers of those, those offensive linemen for uh, Loveland, Tyler Jepson, 51, Jaden Manu, 56, Caleb Kefauver, 58. My crack also, staff gave me the name of Colin Klein. There we go. God, I feel bad for not knowing that, too. What a Mr. great player. Mr. Lytle. Comes Ever back here. to throw, no backs, got nobody around him. He's going to be sacked. Boy. Took too long, nobody got open short. L routes are a little too slow to uh, progress, and uh, he had to basically eat it. He's lucky he just got away without a fumble, so well, turnover he, on downs. He handles the ball a little loosely there, doesn't he? He does the one-hand <clears throat> thing quite a bit. So Reminds me of a game we saw a couple weeks ago. See if the ball's kicked around a little bit tonight, or if they can well, take keep hold of it. Coming out on offense now. First time we've seen the Lapkin offense tonight. First and 10 ball in the 38. Moyer gives it off. Threads his way upfield, the running back. I'm not sure if that's going to be Weaver or Bostek. We'll have to see them as they unpile. They came right off the sideline. That is number 30, Sam Bostek. And one of those nice things that we get to do in this, in this uh, type of broadcast, since we have so many people watching nationwide, number 30, Sam Bostek. I'd like to thank his grandparents. And uh, in Virginia, Ron and Kathy in Illinois, Jane and Arnie. So hello, Grandma, Grandpa, Shout wherever out. you may be. Shout out to Thanks you. Thanks for supporting your grandson. He's yeah. a good football player. Second and eight now for the Lampkins. Pistol formation. Trips to the top of your screen. Give again to Bostick. Breaks off the left side. A lot of room. Still going. First down yard. He's oh, out He might clear. be gone. No, he got caught. That had, I think that had Virginia and Illinois cheering going on right there. Oh, yeah. Everybody. That, that, that was loud. Number 12 with the tackle there. Yeah, good, good hustle downfield by the safety by Grant McLuhan. That's a safety position that's in the jeans there. Dad ended up playing for Indianapolis to Seattle for a while in the NFL. Penalty on the play though, holding's the call. Sometimes there's a reason there's a big gap in the, in the side there. So that spot foul is gonna bring him quite a ways back. Making about second and 13, ball back in, just inside the 35. Seven to nothing, our score. Seven fifty left here in the first quarter. Randy McCoy, David Haas here with you. Ethan Dayton is our cameraman tonight. We've also got a volleyball game getting ready to tip off here at six thirty. Moyer back, shot in their pistol in, gives the ball up the middle. Cut back there, but nice surge in the filling the gaps that time. Nobody really got out of their assignments, and uh, Indians had that swarmed over pretty well. When, when, you, when you're not really a passing threat, you've got it right now. You have to prove Moyer's the, the third, if not the fourth quarterback they've used in, in three games. Yeah. And, and, and you've, got, you've got to show it somewhere well, along the way. this is an example. You know, he's listed as a wide receiver yeah. and defensive back. So well, he's they, not they, even got, listed as a quarterback. Yeah, they've got <laughs> several guys that could play several positions, but quarterback's the toughest one to transition to. There's a throw over the middle. Nice pop. Nice throw. Yep. Well, they're just athletes, you know. Yeah. And, and really... 
most of their, even their successful quarterbacks over the last few years have just been great athletes who yep. weren't necessarily a quarterback first. Yep. Catch made by Colson Thurgood, who's another two-way player. Talk about playing different positions. He'll play fullback, middle linebacker, outside linebacker. Coach Rice gets a lot out of his kids. Whatever it takes. Play change from the sideline. Want to welcome our Loveland fans who may be watching their Indians on uh, streaming sports and blocked. Oh, fake punt that time. Early, early snap. The ball hits into the one of the linemen, backs up down to the four. Moyer smartly goes back and just falls on it. Huge turnover back now for the um, the Indians getting the ball inside the 10-yard line. And, and, and I think if you go back and look, it wasn't a block. I think he I kicked think he, it into his own guy. I believe you're right. I, I, it's, it, that ball was squarely... You know, in somebody's backside. Yeah, and it, it was blocked by back. a couple of cheeks, yeah. actually, <laughs> if you want to say it. Yeah, <laughs> and, and what a carom now. Ball back on, and spotted at the eight-yard line. Huge break early for the Indians to get the ball down. They're so close. And that's part of that problem with if you've got a different quarterback. Usually the Lampkins let their quarterbacks do the punting. Didn't get out of the way that time. Wasn't a deep enough snap. That's just the inexperience. So Everard back in the pistol again with Dunkelman behind him. Trips to the top side. Option to the left side, fakes it, turns up. Good tackle there. That's a touchdown saving tackle, too. Tackle by Alex Doble, number 76. Gain of a couple. Second and goal from about the six yard line, just inside it. That was quite an odd play, wasn't it? The yeah, punt. it was. It was uh, like I say, just, that's just not been doing that very often. Give the ball dunk when he breaks right the middle. Cuts the outside. He's got the corner. Gonna go in it. And he's going to go in to score. Easy run to the outside. Tough runner there, Dunkelman, too. Well, he's he's got some shoulders, doesn't he? Well, he does. 5'10", 225. That's a pretty hefty running back in high school. So that ties uh, us up it, as far as touchdowns. That's we'll pretty see hefty on PAT. Saturday, too, you know. Yeah. So uh, an answer after, uh, obviously, an unexpected play. So two, two plays and special teams have set the game so far. It almost looked like Fort Collins didn't know he was going to punt. Now a special setup here, Lovell faking and going in a formation. Now they go back. Eberhardt's actually the kicker, too. Big surprise. Yep. Brennan Butts, number two, the holder. Now they're back in regular PAT formation. Good snap. Oh, he Rifles that kick through. It just got outside the left upright. Sometimes you outthink yourself. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, that was uh, just a dead hook. If you're, uh, if you've ever played golf with me, I can, you can, you can show that one. That, that's, I know that. That's I know the that history swing. of, that's the history of your golf game, yeah, right there. Right there. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. It just happened. So the Lampkins will be receiving here, getting a little bit of a break with a missed PAT, seven to six here. Early going in the first quarter, 5:37 left here at French Field, watching. The Loveland Indians here visiting the Fort Collins Lampkins. Nice quiet night. People still starting to filter in. Kind of tough, you know, 6.15 is a little tough to get off. Yeah. Get here early. Thanks for those uh, those in Loveland and elsewhere watching us on streamingsports.com. You see this game replayed later on Channel 10 PSD TV during the week. Thanks to our sponsors, too. We've got one we have as our banner sponsor. Yes, Rocky Mountain U Sports, rmusports.com. They handle all the uh, club teams and basketball and uh, junior teams here in the Fort Collins area. They also do administration for club teams. So make sure you go to rmusports.com, ask for Dorsey, and contact her. And they do a great job of administrating, and, and they've got some teams as well. So check them out. Alex Seymour, the kicker. Colson Thurgood, I think, on the uh, return there, trying to make sure I get those numbers correct. Had to get off the pile. Well, if this first six and a half minutes is any indication, this is going to be a Actually, Corey wack Lang. wacky game. Yeah, let's pay attention. Corey Lang, number 12, has had some time at quarterback this year, too. I would imagine we'll see him Which again. One of the few who, or yeah. one, of, one of the many. Yeah, he's had, well, there have been four kids play QB. Part of it, Noah Merrill, their, their starter, got hurt in the very first game. Uh, and uh, has not been back, but uh, Coach Rice did say they expect to have him back in the next week or two, so hope for his speedy recovery. Yeah, they really don't know what they have even yet, you know, and I know it's a great way to put it. Sweep to the left side out of the pistol formation, gain of about four, good lead block out there in front. Merrill was not the incumbent at quarterback, so they, don't, you know, he was a first-year quarterback when he came in. And 
Fort Collins. If you're Fort Collins, you're saying if we can, we can just stay around 500 here until we get our team back, and then yeah. and we've seen them do this. We've seen them run off last five, six games of the year. And this isn't a conference game. They nope. can still get back in that conference. That that's part of the. Uh, it's a long season. Blitz it's coming by the Indians. Steps up there. Boston accepts on the outside. He's got the edge. Cornerback doesn't do the contain. He's going down the side. And that's a late hit. Should that's, be. That's yeah. That, that's one of those. Even though you throw it the legs, you don't throw it the head. You he's stepping out of bounds. Well, I think it's because he went low too. Yeah, yeah. And, and obviously he just pushed back him it. in the shoulder. He probably wouldn't have done anything. Nope. But. Yep. Then that's a, that's a good call. Bostek, uh, I think he's showing a little bit of air there. It's three or four carries in a row and, and playing some defense too. At uh, smartly saves himself to fight again. So on no, top a of, a, of, a, of a nice long run, just a good read and an excellent job on the outside again by the receivers blocking, wasn't it? Yes, it was. That's how you get your long runs. Receivers don't, it's not seen very often. You, they're running by them because they're holding on to a good block and, and uh, keep people in place. Moyer under center now. Straight eye formation, give to Grauberger at fullback, trying to catch Loveland unawares, but uh, they, they stopped it pretty nicely. Some of those linemen out there again. Uh, we, you know, he's had such a a good run of linemen for the uh, Lampkins out there. Ben Freeman, one of the captains, 79. Also, uh, Luke Malone, 71. Steve Scoggins, 70. Andrew Allen, 61. I'll get the rest of them. Pistol snap gives back to Boston. Huge hole up the middle. He's just got to run the end zone, in. and he's going to go in safety. Tries to make another tackle. He was already there. Yeah. Pay dirt for Bostek in the end zone. Yeah, the safety's making good tackles. It's just a little bit yeah. behind. Yeah, no, that's that's what you now want to have as a stat. So Lampkins on a on a nice little drive, take it downfield, and uh, stick it back in the end zone. Kind of just put some physical authority on the game there, weren't they? Yeah, that's hard running there. Oh, well, you know, and, and you get a hole like that, you're not going to deny a, a, a big, strong running back like Bostak from the five-yard line. He shook off that last tackle to give the old dead leg and slip by him. So Lampkins, PAT formation. Yeah, that's... Gravenstein back to kick, the senior. Oh, Kyle Peter taught us about the dead leg there. Huh? Yeah. Kick is up. And good. So 14-6 to six now, Lampkins. Well, they've they've come out. And, and Ethan, if you want to get a shot at that south end zone, there's the Lampkin. We're going to see if his, his uh, push-up count is tonight. Count along and hold to see if he does them all. Better him than us. Yeah. A lot of prep time for a push-up. Well, he, he looks like he's put on a little weight this year, yeah, actually. Yeah, might, might have had a better summer than most. I'm not sure what a Lampkin does all summer, but. Must have been okay. That Lampkin's in pretty decent shape. And there you go, Lampkin, good job. And uh, if you're a Lampkin fan, I hope you, you want to see him doing that a lot more tonight. Those numbers yeah. start to add up. 14-6 our score, 433 left, and what a. Uh, Another bunch what formation. What exciting game to start off with. Fun game to watch so far. And a running fake. Yeah, that's called a team fake, isn't uh, it? Exactly. Andrew Allen, the uh, offensive lineman, to kick off again. Straight forward, just kind of bunts it down the field. Rolls around, takes time to go that. Number 11 for the Indians, picks it up. He's got the right side again. Breaks the outside. There's and a block there's in the a, back. Yeah. yeah, we saw that one coming, didn't we? And there's a face mask. And that a... might be a late hit there. He got dragged out, but no, no flag on that side. But, yeah, we saw that one he out got, there in the He open. got thrown out by something. Yeah. <laughs> didn't Must just have been his jersey. Yeah. From here, it looked. It got spun around pretty good. Yeah. But oh. a great cut, boy, I tell you what, because as far as acceleration, Calvin Kelly there, uh, the senior for Loveland, he's a dangerous return man. Well, but, you know, he's one of those guys that looks for daylight. He's not really looking to run over people. Yeah, he's looking speed for cut the, and go. Yep, and uh, so far he's looked good doing it. Two flags, though, so the uh, penalty taken against. Uh, first one's declined. Second one's going to be a personal foul, and that's going to be against Loveland. That would be the greater of the penalties itself. So it'll be first down. And Loveland's, Loveland and the Fort Collins team is a little bit like Boulder and the Fort Collins team. There's, that's a there's fair a little, statement. There's a little. Uh, it can get a little contested. Yeah, it can. And Windsor and Fort I mean. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? They're competitive <laughs> kids. That's all right. That's kind of the nature of football. 
you'll get a little chippy. I'm just not sure you really care. Yep. Probably doesn't make me happy you with probably, the moms. You probably need to be a little chippy if you're going to play football. Yeah, if you don't want to get it, somebody's going to do it to you. So ball moved after the penalty down inside the, just inside the 14-yard line, first and 10 now. Eberhardt in the pistol. Motion going back behind him. Gives the ball straight, pulls it back out, option right side. Nice job, though, out there, both with Harpum and the uh, inside linebacker, just staying on the uh, uh, option tandem, as it were, with Eberhardt going on the outside and, and uh, made him turn up field, but he still gained six yards. And that's what Colin Klein made a living out of at Loveland yep. and at K-State. Exactly. I mean, led his team to top ten, I believe, with K-State. Oh, yeah, so. Unbelievable senior year. Trips here to the near side. Motion again, back behind the back. Kind of draw those linebackers away. The blitz coming by the Lampkins, and it uh, just swallows them up. Well, I'll tell you, the Lampkins have come out ready to play, and more than we've seen them all year. This, we haven't seen them that much, but yeah. Well, and right there, that's Kyle Shulman, one of your leading tacklers this year, and uh, that's what you need right now. You want to set that tone. That's what your leaders will do on defense. Watch any sport. You want to make a play early. You want to inspire the rest of your teammates, and uh, he did there. Lost about three on the play. Trips getting to the left, tight end standing up. If you look down there, the only the only lineman with his hand on the ground is the center by extension through the ball. The tackles and the guards are in a crouch position. Pump and go. He's got a man deep. If he throws on the top, just caught got him. midfield. What a catch by oh. number. There's that number 11. Number 11 again, and that's uh, Calvin Kelly. What a great throw by Eberhardt, too. If, if that had been just about six inches shorter, it would have been a foot race, and the defensive back had bit on the pump fake, and uh, he turned off and gone. That's the oldest... Uh, it's the oldest trick in the book in football, isn't it? Oh, the pump yeah. fake. Yeah, you, I'll do this and you go long. <laughs> that's, have a that's backyard football yeah, there. Exactly. We do have a penalty flag, although everybody's moving down this way, and it's going to be a holding call against the Lampkins. Probably, you know, you could guess it'd been by the, one of the DBs right. saying, uh, uh oh, I'd rather get that than anything else. Yeah. But he must have got away from it. So What hands by yeah, that number was, 11? Yeah, that was finger Kelly. tap there. Kelly, uh, he just pulled that in. So a huge play to get him out of the hole. Their biggest offensive play of the game right now for the Indians. I don't think this game's going to end up 14-6. I think you're probably right. Timeout on the field now by the Lampkins. So with a quick timeout here in the first quarter, we'll step aside. I am UC Health. I am UC Health. I'm Jill, and I am UC Health. Laughter clubs bring people together in ways that are unmatched. It helps you decrease stress. It helps you relax more. So at UC Health, they allow us to embrace the community, embrace our members, and do some really wonderful things. Our roots run deep at the University of Colorado Health. Share your roots at imuchealth.org. So we're back here. Fort Collins with the timeout. I think that's a good time as we were discussing during our break there, Randy, just to get your defense back there. Say, keep in front of you. We're playing really well up front right now. That by far their best play. You know, they had the short run for the touchdown. That was off of a turnover. So you've got to have a confidence in your front seven, and I think Coach Rice does. No back now around Eberhardt. Trips left, two receivers up on top of your screen. Bubble screen here to the left. Got a man in the slot. Cuts it up field. Drags a couple of tacklers. That's uh, number 10, T Trey Flock. Well, you know, I like that play, but the one I like better is when the receiver's already moving. running, moving inside instead yeah. of standing there because yeah. they, you know, explain a little bit. When you stop and then have to start again, you're exactly it's, right. It's, it's really hard, but if you are on the run there, that's a different play. When I think. you get a chance to make a cut, then too. I mean, it's an easier throw for the quarterback if the receiver's. We saw Foster Ridge do that the other night, and it was too yeah. wide, and, yeah, yeah. The, and the receiver was standing. They had to get their momentum going again. Don't come on the option out here to the left side pitch. Everard does it. Dunkman cuts up field right into all the uh, help. That was a great job by the defensive back who came up from the outside. He set the corner, meaning that he would not let the running back go outside him and uh, forced him back in where he had all of his help coming. So gained him maybe just a yard or so. <laughs> Brings up about a third and seven. Loveland's got to get inside the 43 of the Lampkins for first down. They're a good back into the game now. Kind of an extra... You know, we're getting Actually, that's Bostack, number 30. That one and that three are similar. Yeah. Lampkin's still trying to get people in position here. 
Still out of position. Fakes the ball, got the bit over the middle. Everhart tries to break up field, gets away from one tackler, Boy, dies close. for the chains, but uh, I think he's going to be just short. He barely got across the 44. Yeah, no, he's short. Good fake, though. I, I really was, and it was just a one one hand on a leg there kept him from going quite a ways. I showed, some, showed some athleticism there. They're, they're not going to punt, are they? You smell those burgers? I wish he hadn't said that. What in the world is people cooking out here? Yeah, that's that's a... Nice night for that. Wow. Got the grill going. Got a little uh, tailgating going on across the way. So now they're subbing a few people out, and actually we're going to have a timeout taken by Loveland. Uh, so they decide what they want to do on this fourth and short. There's a lot, of, uh, a lot of timeouts going on here in the first quarter, but we'll be right back. Who wants more peas? Go away. Oh, Daddy hates pop-up ads. <laughs> Go <more>? away. <laughs> Hashtag... Dinner time. Scroll forward. Shave selfie. <gasps> no. Selfie. Scroll forward. <laughs> Delete selfie. Go away. Then picture. Bookmark. No. Go away. No. no. Post photo. Scroll up. Scroll forward. Hashtag Faster. gravy. Faster. Faster. The First Bank mobile app. Technology has never been so easy. And once again, David's cousin. There was stalwart Lampkin down there. So a big fourth down play after the timeout. The Indians break their home from the sideline. Back out here in a offensive formation. Pistol formation again. Everhart back, although two, two running backs set inside the tackles. So you, it is still a punt possibility. Until they tried to draw him offside there. Fort Collins, nice job of not biting. Gives the ball to McQuaid up the middle. D's going to be hit for a loss. Nice job of getting to the legs of the running back right away. Shulman and, and uh, Jack Peterson, 65, come up to the bottom of that pile. They got to his legs right away, Randy. No chance for him to, to make another cut and go for that first down chain. So turnover on downs by the Indians now by the Lampkin defense. And that's twice now that uh, oh. Loveland's gone for it and has not gotten it. Yeah, big risk and big reward, obviously, but not tonight so far. Moyer back under center, twins the left side, fullback and running back. And we have a play interrupted by a whistle. I don't see a flag. Yeah, there's one back by the 45, 44. Must have been a delay a game. No illegal substitution on the defense. Or, or a pledge of allegiance. Yeah, it's... Uh, to the flag. Yeah, they're going to get that uh, down over with. And uh, somebody from Loveland was on the field when they broke the huddle and decided to run off. High school, that's an illegal substitution. I think it's one of the sillier fouls going because they, unless they're on the field, they didn't make a play. And there's no disguising. Anyway, that's enough of a rant. Great run on the first and five that time. Bostak takes it up, weaves himself through the middle there in a gain of six for moving the chains. I think Mr. Bostak wants to have a night tonight, doesn't he? Well, you know, it's you, you gotta, they've got to win it by running the ball. And uh, you want to shorten this game up and uh, just however best you can do it. They get a touchdown here, and the way the defense is playing, that's going to be a pretty big gap to, to overcome. Give ball then. Moyer runs out to the left side, looks to throw down field. has got a man open. Hits Harpham downfield, first down yard to Jen Moore. Just very simple play, you know? Yep. Well, that gives an athlete like Moyer a chance to just move. Gets his receiver out there, the really only one, unless he throws it way behind, which he certainly didn't. Even right in the numbers is a very good pass. And uh, an easy pitch and catch. And, uh, well, Harpham, he's got a real quiet motion. Yeah. He, you know, he's nice not and all, easy. He's not all over the place with his arms. And... Yep. So uh, an excellent first down play. Roll left and about 20-yard completion. And uh, we've got whistles again. Got near side official. We got encroachment. This is going to be by a defensive back. Uh, kind of one of those moments where you're like, uh, he just lost sight of where he's at on the field. Because he's got a he's got a flanker down here who's off the line of scrimmage, and he gets up in that two yard two yard gap. Well, he didn't realize he was standing on the offensive side of the wall on the line. So another first and five for the Lampkins, pistol formation. Another give to Bostak behind the guards, cuts up underneath again. It's just a way to be patient and run behind your blocking, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Just well, maybe short right, right at the chains for the first down. And Coach Rice has to be just really happy with the patience of his offense, and that probably be the last play of the quarter here unless they about seven seconds left. 
Well, now we're gonna have a stoppage of time with four seconds left. Not sure why, but maybe we've had they were talking, maybe the official, they thought the young man needed to be stopped and get off the field, but he's okay. Gonna wind the clock and that's and gonna be it. they're not gonna play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After all that, then in one quarter here at French Field, the Lampkins up on the visiting London Indians, 14 to six. Wayne, everyone knows by now that Schrader's Country Stores have the best car washes around. They don't need to see you standing in the car wash explaining the undercarriage wash, the rocker panel spray, the protective finish application in the jet dryer. No, Wayne, all you have to do is see the beautiful shine on my nice clean car. No muss, no fuss, and I'm certainly not all wet. You won't get soaked at Schrader Country Store car washes, just shiny clean. So there you see the Lampkins running down the other end of the field. Getting in position to score here again. Getting ready to start the second quarter here. Randy McCoy, David Haas. That last offensive lineman I was looking for, Randy, 62, Cooper Allen Brand out there. All those guys up front right now, Andrew Allen and, and uh, Ben Freeman and the, and the rest of the guys, uh, Luke Malone, Steve Scoggins, they're, they're just paving the way right now. And as you said before, Bostak staying behind and being patient and uh, using that uh, bruising uh, frame of his, he's just knocking people down. If you get him into the secondary, he's going to be pretty tough to get, isn't he? He is. Probably about 100 folks over here from Loveland, even a few of the student students come up to cheer on their classmates. Yep. So twins both side now, pistol formation, Bostek behind Moyer. Back to throw, bubble screen right up the middle, throws it in the crowd. Yeah, that's that ball that's got such there a timing. just before that's the defense such, did. That's such a timing play. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's the, that's the effect of having more experienced quarterback because he kind of stared that one down. There wasn't a lot of subterfuge in that one. He's just hoping the guys to rush yeah, up field, but the linebackers saw that pretty easily. And nobody got his separation yeah. when they ran either. Tough so. one to go. But it did get just that, that amount for the first down. I mean, it was a positive yard or two. So first and 10 now, ball in the 16-yard line. Loveland, almost everybody in the box, basically eight up front. Get the ball, Bostak, he's got the edge again. There's nobody out there, nobody's getting to that edge. Slips off one tackle, takes it down to about the six yard line. I mean, if you're, if you're gonna have that many people up there, you've gotta hook that outside blocker, and boy, all of a sudden, the tackle and the guard that pulled from the backside, they were all over, weren't they? Well, you know, when you bunch up like that, it's, it can be good if you run into the bunch, but it also means you don't have any coverage on the outside, and we've seen it before, and if they yep. bust through the bunch, there's nothing in the back end either. So the double wing bunch formation, McCloskey in at fullback now, gives the ball to Bostak, going on the fumbles it, picks it up, pulls it on his back, oh my gosh. That could have been a disaster. He went around there. The ball was kind of outs on the side of him. If you saw the close-up of that as he ran around the corner, he was hugging it on his hip with one hand. Down, Kept possession of it. Got into the pile. They got down inside enough to get a first and goal. So Sam Bostek uh, kind of averted disaster there. And that's such a different angle for the quarterback. Like I said, Moyer is doing a nice job tonight, but he hasn't had several hundred repetitions with these backs, has he? No, he hasn't. That's a different thing to do. Ball handling is so important. Ball security is what they talk about. Gap again, the ball on the inside, on the inside trap play. Loveland just did a nice job of sitting on that. That's where you fake the sweep around the right and coming back the far right side, that wing back follows that guard on a trap underneath. And uh, Loveland just sat there and uh, no gain. Maybe a yard or so, but there's a penalty flag. Looking to talk to the Loveland cap captain, so it looks like it's gonna be a penalty and it's actually gonna be a face mask actually on Loveland. So that down over again and moves it in halfway to the goal line, puts it right inside the two yard line. So back in the pistol now, Harpin with Bostak behind him. Kind of spread out those linebackers, gives the ball Bostak up the middle. He just pushes his way into the goal, into the end zone. Just a bull run right up the middle behind that line and it's good for six. Doesn't have to be pretty when you need just a couple yards. No, it doesn't. And that was effective. So a 10-21 left here in the second quarter. Collins is starting to put some distance between them, the visiting Indians from Loveland High School. 20-6, PAT pending. 
a shout out to my buddy Marty Cesario. He's doing the Grandview Eagle Crest game tonight. So out there covering that. Yeah, pretty good football good, game. Good job on Tuesday nights, him and Samantha Peters. Grabenstein out there again for the PAT. High snap taken, driven right up between the uprights. Grabenstein's perfect on the night, three for three. And now where is that, that uh, north end zone now for that push-up count coming for our Lampkin? Yeah, he's... Uh, he We're going to stay on him now. That, that's gonna, he gets 21 here. That's going to be a total for 42 of the night for those involved in higher math. That, that push-up count early here in the second quarter, it might get out of hand. I lost count, but we're going to trust him that he's going to do it the right amount. There's 14. <laughs> oh, he's putting his putting his foot up. Yeah, he's, he's showing, showing off, off now. Oh, I'm waiting for those rocky one arms. Yeah, I, he probably got about 19. Yeah. I'm not sure how well Lampkins count, but. As long as he doesn't come up here and dare one of us to go down and do it, right? Yep, you're right. Big night here, nice crowd by the Lampkins showing up on a Thursday night. Another fake from the uh, break of the huddle of the uh, Lampkin kickoff team. Allen to kick off again. Just another low squib kick, taken at the 30 yard line though. Cutting up field, nice solid tackle. But you know, those short kicks add up. I guess it's the old, you try to make a mistake, see something happens, but the ball's fielded by Trey Flock, number 10. He takes it upfield, and uh, they got great field position again. They're going to snap it from their own 37. So it's time now for the Indians. To, they, they need a march, don't they? They need to have something to go down and, and, and move the sticks to get in the end zone. Well, they've had a couple of nice plays. and Yeah, just haven't strung together. We know Calvin Kelly, number 11, at the top of your screen. Dangerous, dangerous uh, return and receiving man. Trevor Hart, Dunkelman behind him again in the pistol, trips the top. Give Dunkelman right at the middle, slides along. Actually, that's not Dunkelman, that's number 30. That's uh, Noah Pangrak. 77 yards so far in the season on first down, gains a couple. We'll credit out there also that number 84 playing tight end, blocking tight end is Alex Hannaford, senior tight end, 6'2", 200 pounds for the Loveland Indians here on the near side, number 28 split out wide is uh, Caden Nye. And a timeout's gonna be taken by Fort Collins. So uh, some of these multiple sets out here, you can tell Coach Rice does not like the way his defense is lined up. He doesn't wanna give up the big play. So a teaching moment for him and a timeout for us. Where is the middle of nowhere? You can't find it on a map. There's no looking up its address. And there are no GPS coordinates to punch in or freeway exit signs to take. The fact is, the middle of nowhere is pretty hard to find. And that's just fine with us. Toyota, let's go places. So we're back here. French Field, Fort Collins, Colorado, Thursday night football. Great night here, Fort Collins, Colorado. See if we can't get our buddy Kevin Lytle in here at half to kind of give us a review of the last week in PSD sports. We'll preview tomorrow. Yeah, a lot of a lot of sports activities going on this week. Softball, cross country. Quick shot over the middle oh, there. Oh, it was wow. caught and dropped. Yeah, I think he was looking to go ahead and run there a bit because he was wide open. Uh, Alex Hannaford took the ball from Eberhardt and uh, cut up field. And uh, Eberhardt did a nice job delivering that pass in, in the slot where he could find him open, too, because he was getting some pressure. Good push-up field that time. Alex Doble, number 76. Schulman out there again. Talk about those, those tackles. Jack Peterson, also number 65. Young sophomore getting a lot of time on this Lampkin defense. So third and eight again. Long third down plays have been what the Indians have faced tonight mostly. Everhart rolls to his left. He's got the edge. Needs to look downfield. Lost one up in the air. Contested. Tipped and goes to the ground. Incomplete. Well, the receivers, except for the one pass, have not been able to get separation. No. From nice the job by Collins, the defensive uh, backs. Defensive backs. You 
you can always tell uh, Coach Rice, he's out there in the shorts and the sleeveless shirt. Yeah. <clears throat> it can't be cold, I'm not cold. Single return man now out there. He's a uh, fully engaged coach. Yeah, yeah. Kind of running back to throw the ball. It's going to be a long down, downfield pass. Oh, right off the pads. Nice throw by Eberhardt. Had number Boy. 45 wide open down the seam. And, uh, and Ryan Svensson hits him right in the numbers. Kind of a tough over the shoulder catch, but he dropped it. And uh, that uh, would have saved him a headache. I think it hit him in the face mask, too. Yeah, so. it just it was kind of those tough ones to turn around for. And you get some of the big guys, that's a little tougher catch. You don't, you're not used to catching passes turning like that so much. A great throw, though, and what a break. Boy, Gives the ball back on the 39. Any, they just must not have anybody who can punt. Well, and right now they're down 21-6. to six. They're looking to make something happen, and uh, that might be too late anyway. Harpum now, excuse me, Moyer on the sweep to Bostock to hand off wide hand, maybe a yard or two. They had a complete overload on the right side that time. Extra tight in the slot there, so about like four extra bodies on that side of the uh, center, and uh, but nice job by Loveland getting underneath those blocks. Coach McGinn choosing not to punt for the third time. So Corey Lang, receiver up to the top. Harpin down here all by himself on this near sideline on the numbers. Moyer back to throw. Looks single coverage. His left takes it deep downfield to Harpin. He's got a battle. Nice job by the defensive back who's going to pick it off. Probably intercepted. Looks yeah, he got underneath no, it. No, he didn't get it. Harpin Harp, Harp, took it away. Harpin's trying to pull it from him. You're going to give that one to the defensive back. And oh they just my. gave it, oh my goodness. Oh my. I'm not sure how, he had all the position. The defensive back, I'll get, you know, I'm a little biased, but number eight got underneath them and Anthony Stiano, he was underneath Harpin. Harpin turned into a DB himself because he had he was out of position for the throw. Stiano was underneath it and uh, he had the first catch on the ball. They go to the ground wrestling for it. So what the back judge is saying is that uh, Harpham had possession before. If they go down as a tie, they're generally going to give the offense, but I didn't see that as a tie at all. Oh, I, that was beautiful defense. Yeah, no, you couldn't play it much better than that without a separation. And uh, Coach McGinn and his uh, staff right now are would love to have a piece of that back judge. I don't think uh, he's going to go outside the hash marks, if, I, even on a timeout. I think he would like to ask. Yeah, timeout taken by Loveland, uh, one for the center on the team. We'll and, keep that here and yeah. see if. Yeah, because... Uh, we get a shot up there at the top of the uh, screen towards that Loveland huddle, Ethan. Uh, uh, yeah. The white hat gets to uh, do the explaining and uh, gets a, another partner. And that's what the crew does. I mean, that's what they do. You defend your call, you stay with it. But uh, Well, I'm, I'm with a Coach McGinn call. from here, you know, and I wouldn't. Stiano they're a lot, they're was a lot in closer great than me. position. Oh, yeah, young he, man just. You couldn't play much better than that. He had the under coverage, kept there, and Harpham showing what a great athlete he is. Uh, gets gets over the top of him and wrestled away and got the call. So credit to him for ending up with it. But uh, he's asking his player, "Did you have it?" And, oh yeah. You know, of yeah. course, I'd tell you the answer to that. But. Yeah. No, I don't think that needs much uh, more explaining from our end. So either way, it doesn't matter what we say or do. It's first and ten now for the Lampkins. Ball good. on the inside the ten. Good fortune for first and uh, goal for Collins. And it was a, it was a good throw. Yeah. But it was great defense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Lampkin's finally getting some of the breaks. They haven't had many this year, so toss no. to the right side now. Harpham takes it upfield. Tries to speed toss, and gets outside. Hold. Yeah, that, that was an easy one to call from the outside. Young man guy got thrown to the ground. Well, and I think I think the defender did a pretty good job he of playing that up, too. He might have got a little bit of an act on the end of that, you think? Yep. I was going to call it little Mary Kay. We haven't used that this yeah, yeah. year, but little, I don't think that was Mary call. I don't yeah. think that was yeah, Mary you Kay. Need, you need to back him up to midfield, I think, on about three more to have a makeup call. Because that was an obvious holding right out on the yeah. front of everybody. Spot foul there. I'll move him back 10 yards from that. I don't think that's still going to make, make a, a level coach's smile. I don't play. Well, and, you know, it's not really the yards. It's just, you know, you like to see a guy uh, rewarded when he makes such. That's as good a defensive back play I've seen all year, yeah. you know. Yep. But, again, we didn't see how they went down, so. So, first and goal from the 21 after the penalty. There's a spot foul, so it's outside the 10-yard line. That's what took a back past the 20. And Moyer's really uh, managing the game well. Isn't no, he? he's doing a nice job. He's thrown effectively the couple times he's had to. No ball ball mistakes whatsoever. 
Very level-headed. Try to go on the outside. This time now they're starting to fill that gap on that delay bounce out there where he tries to, Vostak tries to go along outside and uh, I think they're going to need to go back and just stay between the, the tackles again. Uh, he, he's equally effective there, but I think even more so. And uh, Loveland, uh, they're cheating up. Their, their safeties are very much involved in run support now. So they got five down linemen. You know, the old 52, but the ends aren't standing up. They are down with a hand on the ground. Moyer back to throw over the middle, sees a man wide open, hits him, he's going to walk in the end zone. And the safety misjudged the play, he was going for the interference. And a late hit, Loveland losing their uh, composure there. Cool there, yeah. And shot deep in the end zone after the young man had already crossed the end zone a couple of uh, steps there. Well, no, he was eight yards in the yeah, end zone. Yeah, yeah. That might get I would somebody say, ejected. Uh, I was going to say, I would do your hitting at the other time and then he wouldn't score a touchdown. Yeah. But the safety on that play, Randy, he stepped in there as a slant pass. He read it. He was just a, a half a step late. So the unsportsmanlike conduct being called on Loveland after the play, which the signals by the official now is that it'll be enforced on the kickoff. And the Lampkins will be kicking off uh, across midfield. But now we've got the PAT pending. Gravenstein back out there again to make it 28 to 6. And that's a frustration. No. Penalty, but but yeah. they keep track of those, don't they? Uh, yeah, they do. If you get two unsportsmanlike penalties in a, in a game, uh, you are definitely out. Softball score here. I think that ball was tipped on the PAT. It's still good. So that uh, just shows you how the breaks are going for the Lampkins. What's that softball score, Randy? Uh, looks like Collins 9, Pooter 8. So, so another uh, close city game. Yep. Thanks again to our Lampkins super fan. Eric Sampson. Eric Sampson, Big E. And I know uh, Lampkins were up early on that game, so Pooter made a comeback on that one. They were up 7-3 to three early over Pooter, and uh, Lampkins uh, eked it out at the end by one run. So a competitive game over there tonight. And there's some more push-ups. Yeah, that's uh, uh, you, you went to 42, and now you get add another 28 on there. You keep doing the math. This kind of exponential number here, he's, he's going to get up to 70 here if he... Uh, and all joking aside, it's got to be hot. Oh, that, and that's, that's a young man's game right now, I'll tell you that. So after the unsportsmanlike penalty, and uh, Coach McGinn is still, you know, it, it's tough to tell your kids to after what they really felt was done. They're, they're still looking now. The ball's going to be kicked off on the 45-yard line of the Indians. He's fairly exercised. Uh, I don't blame him. That happens. And uh, everybody's been on side of calls they don't like. Now the squib kept I don't know, that here. it just looked it looked pretty obvious from here that the young man was in front and got the ball, but obviously he didn't come down with it. So. Onside kick now by Fort Collins. Trying to really and make that, the, that's make the a game turn. Coach Rice. Yeah, they move, have a chance to really make a move. You're not going to gain much by kicking it deep anyway. So right. uh, covered by, uh, I mean, that's about where they've been getting the ball anyway. Yeah, you might as well try to. And a nice job by the uh, kickoff receiving team for the Indians, covering that ball right away and just getting down. Teammates came over and covered up on him. First and 10 on the 35. So we said it before, the, the Indians need to get something going offensively, and they really have had very little other than a couple pass plays. Well, they've had some potential big plays that they just have not been able to. Yep. Credit the uh, a tenacious defense by the Lampkins. They've been playing hard all year. It's just tough when the offense hasn't been clicking as well as it has tonight. Good run up the middle. Still breaking tackles going forward. Gain of about six on first down. If you want to open another browser, you can catch the Fossil Ridge Greeley West volleyball game right now with Sam Peters, Phil Mildren. It's over uh, at Fossil Ridge High School. Just looks like it's just starting. JV game must have went a little late. Carried by Noah Pangrek on that first one. Gain of five. Just go out to streamatsports.com slash PSD and check under games. And it's right there. Pangrak in on the carry, breaks up the middle. Still going, just dragging people forward. A little spirit coming back in that offensive uh, line now for the Indians. Nice job of the, of the front five there, pushing back. 
I don't feel like they're running Dunkelman enough. I mean, that's... Well, he's back out. He's not in the game right now, so after all those carries, uh, <clears throat> it's Pangrak who's been in the last two series. And Dunkelman plays both ways on defense, too, so he's one of their leading tackles, tacklers. Pangrak, a little smaller back, but a little more of a speed back. Motion across the formation. Give to Pangrak, get up the middle, bounces the outside. It's going to be swallowed up, though. Dives forward for a couple. 6.27 left here in the second quarter. Now Dunkelman's back in the game. Number five, you sit back in the pistol behind uh, Eberhardt. Almost Spencer every. 45 along with number 10 out here, the near side's uh, Trey Flock and number 28 for the Indians, the near receiver, Caden Nye. Yeah, two big attempts here on a fourth down, long pass that just was dropped. Uh, those the little near misses, and then a couple of tough calls. Wow. Great job Bolting of getting to the through. legs. Somebody flew up there with uh, abandon. 15 or? Uh, it's I, I think, I, I thought it might have been 50. I mean, you keep looking back and forth if that was Jackson Shore or not. But uh, could have been could have been just as well. 16, uh, Cody Faber. Yeah, and, I think that's we, who it might have been. And, and we, we see those guys. Uh, you want to give everybody the credit they deserve yeah. out there for their effort, but it's so hard to read those numbers, even binoculars. So third and seven again, once along, the defense for, for the Lampkins has put the uh, Loveland offense, Randy, in third and long all night. Misstep there, the quarterback and running back. It kind of worked the delay. They'll good outside pass, caught first down yardage. Got a good gritty run by yeah, number yeah. 10 there. Yeah, you got across the, got there, you know, Trey Flock. Saw exactly where he needed to go in the sticks and caught the ball. And uh, Grauberger, number three on the tackle. Well, Loveland really needs a score here if they want to stay in this, stay in this game because uh, yeah, it'd be tough to get inspired coming back out when you're trailing by three scores and you well, really haven't mounted anything. And you, well, they haven't really stopped for Collins. Fort no. Collins is not a good offense. I mean, up to now they haven't been. Yeah, they've started to show it. There's a moving after that. There was a penalty marker after the play. Enough for first down yardage, so a face mask call. So takes the ball across midfield because they say Loveland got their touchdown after the uh, uh, a punt attempt by the Lampkins bounced off a lineman and clear back down to the seven yard line. So other than that, they've not really pushed it down the field inside the 30, but once. Give the ball, Dunkelman breaks on the left side. He's out in the open though. Back to safety. Gets there the he's edge. going. Going to be chased down inside the five, the four, three, just side of the goal line. What a great run. I just know if I had a young man like that in my backfield, he'd be getting the ball about 40 times a night. Yeah, you want to, he's a big, strong kid, and, boy, he got through there in the secondary, and there's guys just hanging on for dear life, and they didn't give up. They got him down, but uh, what a good great quicks, run. Good quicks on him, That was too. a burst. Yeah, you're right. He, he wasn't lumbering at all. So back in business now, down in first and goal. Two-back formation next to Eberhardt. Give the ball, fake the pull out. Dunkelman goes behind him. He just stepped in the end zone. Really nice ball fake that time by Eberhardt. No one really laid a glove on him. Touchdown, Indians. So that'll get you back in the game. You get it back down to two scores. You get a little uh, life on your offense, and uh, all of a sudden it's a ball game. I'm sure the Indians are probably going to go for two here. Well, you know, a lot of times you miss a call like that, don't get a call. It puts a little chip on your shoulder. And yeah, the OS against them, kinda, that's been more than one know, rallying cry, hasn't it? Well, I was reading an article today, at, you know, talked about Tom Brady's demise last year when he got beat by the Chiefs. Everhart, nice which, job by the secondary. Boy, I think you just got to throw that, don't you? Yeah, you got to make an just attempt. Get it, get it out there? Yeah, give somebody a chance because you, you really don't have – that defense is so close to you, uh, you don't have much room to run there. They're not like they're 20 yards downfield. So uh, PAT attempt for two fails, so that's going to keep the score more than two scores now. It's a 16-point game, two scores, two extra points would be needed by the Indians to tie it up with 431 left here in the first half. You know, reading an article today how everybody thought Tom Brady was done last year when the Chiefs beat him. Yeah. 49-12, and they said, no, you just woke up a sleeping giant. Sleeping giant, and then you did did all that stuff in the offseason. There's no telling what he's liable to do this yeah, year. Yeah, they, there's people there. They're looking uh, very, uh, <laughs> very happy in the Patriot land right now. Broncos coming in 3 and 0 as well so yeah kind of a you know one of those uh, do we look good doing Behind it but the you scenes. know what 
or you know, kind of under the radar. Yeah. Look at look. At, you know, all I got to do is look at the record. If they they start playing better. Harpin back now, single setback, standing on his uh, seven eight yard line, waiting for the kick. Uh, we've got the biggest numbers we're going to see all year kicking. Number seventy two now kicking off again. Uh, Alex Seymour, straight on kicker, just squibs this one down the middle, tries to get that clock, shorten that field up. Lang takes it, steps forward, nice job, Corey Lang there, returns it out past the thirty five near the forty. Corey Lang would be probably playing if they Lampkins were behind or more of the passing quarterback. Yeah, I would imagine we'll get to see a lot of him next year too. Just a junior. What's funny is, you know, these pistol formations, you don't really need a quarterback. Yeah. I mean, really, you're a running back. Yeah. And you need to know how to hand the ball off. And Mostly, that's about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, Cadillac number two up on a Cadillac, excuse me, a number two up on the top of your screen. Uh, we thought he had the touchdown cast before. It was just tough to catch that in the end zone, that far side up there, Michael Cadillac, the uh, junior. Moyer hands back eye formation at the time. Deep handoff. Good job having both hands on that ball. Yeah, it really was there. Uh, you, you, you get across that scrimmage. Bostack had it there, but number 55, uh, Jack, Zach Swartout had a good grip on him. Came down from his defensive tackle spot. Nice and methodical. The uh, Lampkins back up on the line of scrimmage. Coming down four minutes left in the half. Roll off the right side. Got pressure. Downfield wide, wide open. open. Makes one man miss. Is going to go to the far side of the field. Going to be caught. Dragged down inside the 25-yard line. Nice, uh, nice tenacity by number nine by Loveland. You know yeah, he, he could have he yeah. could have just kind of mailed it in there and uh, watched him run to the end zone. But Michael Cadlick again out there. There was uh, obviously broken coverage there because he was so wide open. And Moyer did a nice job. Just put it out there, give him time to catch it, and then a good run after catch. Dylan, Dylan Jackson. Yes, yeah, secondary number nine. The uh, uh, yeah for Loveland. Five there. ten, uh, hundred ninety pound junior. Nice job, nice hustle there. Yeah, any any tackle by defensive back is a good one. <laughs> Say that over and over again. Stretch play, handoff out to the outside. Bostek going a great blocks, nobody around. Down inside the fifteen to the twelve. Just nice job in front of him. He, and he again just keeping his pads parallel to the line of scrimmage and, and going forward. And then he had that opening and took it downfield. Just short of first down yardage. So nice first half numbers wise for Sam Bostak. Bring up second and short. Moyer comes back to the sideline with the play. Cadlick. Thurgood and Weaver up on the top in the trips formation. Harp him down here, single into the sideline. You're getting out there with Randy where offensively, you can start calling a few plays. You got first, and, you know, you can try some different things that may you work on later in the year. High snap, taken up the middle. That time just a blitz came. That was a great call against that uh, setup there. They didn't have enough bodies to block who they had coming, did they? No, they didn't. And, you know, what Fort Collins has done is they're playing within themselves, but they're, they're very calm. And uh, they're just b being methodical. Yep. Well, and you talked about before, Moyer's doing a nice job, the senior captain, out there just running the offense. Not, they're, not, they're keeping it you know, fairly vanilla, but uh, just giving him the chance to let the other guys do the work. Diamond formation around that two-back set with the back behind the quarterback. Ball Bostek up the middle, sets around a couple blockers, goes forward, gets it down inside the 10. Kind of like Novocaine, just works kind of slow, but it works. Well, I, to be honest with you, you told me that uh, Fort Collins could potentially have 35 points in the first half. I would say I, I'm not sure they've scored that many the whole year. I'd have to go back uh, and look. No. Nope. Uh, nope. They've that, had that, a pretty tough not. schedule, but yeah, no, they have. By the way, though, this is as good as they've looked and consistently so. Same diamond formation again. Roll out the right side. Harpin's actually in a quarterback now. Just takes it around the Wildcat to the edge. There's the flags we yeah. saw coming. That was pretty slow developing, and uh, it's so tough to block out on the perimeter because you're going to be right in front of everybody, and, and the, uh, the action is easy to see. If you get a hand out on somebody and they see some uh, material in it, uh, they call it and they see it. That's as simple football as you can get. Yeah. Hike the ball to the halfback and... Yeah, just Wildcat, which is what they tried to do a lot of last week down at uh, Windsor. Obviously, Windsor just took out a whole lot of uh, last couple of years on the uh, 
the Lampkins uh, in a pretty convincing win. Wins are looking really strong again this year in football in 4A, yeah. highly ranked. Number three, I believe, or uh -huh. four something. Minute 59 left here, second quarter. Looks like we're going to have a performance by the, the Fort Purple Collins Regiment. Purple Regiment Band tonight. So, Great night to be out here at French Field. So third down and about 24. They got to get down to about the three-yard line. And we had a flag before the snap. And it's going to be a oh, procedure call. That's going to be delay a game. That was a long time coming. But uh, so uh, what was uh, third and 24, uh, third and 22, turns to third and 27. <clears throat> and of all the teams to kind of pull off something like this and make it work, uh, I'd bet on the Lampkins, wouldn't you? Mm-hmm. Over the years, we've been able to bring these broadcasts to you and watching high school football here locally. 25 Leone in there now. Out here in this near split end. Oh, Jake, he uh, good basketball player, too. Yep, yep. Snap this time to Moyer back in the game at quarterback. Takes it down the middle. Intercepted, though. That time was a little too stared down. Nice job by the middle linebacker for the Indians. Still on his feet, crossed the 40. Colson Thurgood's going to catch him about the 45. So uh, a nice return with a minute seven left here in the game. They needed that catch on that fourth down play because yeah. that's uh, number 45. Yeah, Ryan Svensson again. Uh, he wasn't able to haul that one in. But so, what a great uh, athletic play on a defense that time. He just played center field as the linebacker in the under coverage. And uh, part of that's the inexperience again, Moyer. They're starting to let him do a few things we talked about. You know, you got if he's going to play a lot of quarterback this year, you've got to take it downfield sometime. And they uh, that time, uh, Svensson just uh, read it perfectly in a pick and a run. A so lot of uh, Lampkins walking around in their uh, shorts down there, aren't they? Few, yeah. Several yeah, injured. There's a lot of guys that's done back yet. Uh, hopefully some will be back, and we know a few that had some pretty tough injuries are done for the year. Happens every year, and you're sad for every one of those kids. So first well, and ten lost now. two players. I know Fossil Ridge lost their starting running back. Yep. So you you know you feel for those kids. That's a big game tomorrow night for Fossil Ridge and Pooter here, too. First and 10 ball in the 46. There's the snap. Straight down the middle pass. Just a little long. I think it's going to be intercepted, and it was. No, he's oh. calling it. Yeah, I just cradled at the end. So that might be a... I think Kyler Harpin broke back on the ball. I think uh, if he goes one for two tonight, I think he'd like the other one. But uh, made a great diving play for it. But uh, back judge is right on top of it. If I'm not mistaken, is Rocky and Legacy tonight or tomorrow night? I, th I mean, Hor Horizon. Rocky Horizon, and Horizon. Horizon. Yep. Everhart downfield throws the short man a little too and high. He's not, he's not getting any help, and he's... Ball sailing on him. He's yep. kind of short-arming, and he's not coming over the top, and that ball's... Most of his passes have been high. So third and ten now, trying to, you know... Take advantage of it with not much time left. You're in 54 seconds. I mean, plenty of time if you're going to throw it, but you've got to complete him. Trips into the near sideline here. Single receiver up on top. Everhart looks down the right side. He's going to be blitz. Gets away from one. Takes around the outside. He's going to just get to the out of bounds. Stop the clock. Nice job by Jack Grauberger. Making sure he goes out of bounds instead of sliding in short. So the three-yard gain really was immaterial. He wasn't going to get the first down anyway, but he, he did a nice job. Smart job by the senior getting out of bounds. Yeah, he did and saved himself from getting... Clocked over there, too. Yeah. Grauberger had uh, pretty much had a tone lock on him, so he smartly stepped out of bounds. So another fourth down for the Indians here in the first half. They don't even consider punting. No. Unless this is a... Well, you know what? Right now might not be the worst thing to do. Huh? They are going back. Yeah, it is a punt. Steps through the uh, the break this time. Caught in the air, though, by the safety. He's uh -oh. got nobody on the far side. Makes one cut, comes back upfield, and uh, is going to be taken down across midfield. So plenty of time left. The ball happened to go right to Kyler Harpin back there. Which is who you would want to catch it. I'm, I think I'd have kept going forward. I, I, he thought he could cut back. Yeah, he's looking for the big green area, wasn't he? It's one of those, uh, it's easier to do, but what a great alert play. Um, catching that ball in the air, because just a low driving kick like that just meant to roll and roll. And uh, But he went back there and... Uh, well, and that's the advantage to catching him. us. Sometimes you say, well, just let it roll well. 
Sometimes you catch the defense off guard because that's what they're expecting, and they're yeah, not really coming it down. Jet to is straight forward. So ball just inside the uh, 44-yard line on the Indian side of the field. There's time left here. 34 seconds left to play here in the half. Countdown started by the back jug. Snaps in time. All they run it there and uh, taken down by the shoulder pads. There, somebody got a pretty good hand. Number 17 for Loveland there gets a grab on him. They're going to take a timeout here to stop at the uh, the Lampkins will. So we'll step aside and be back. I am UC Health. I am UC Health. I'm Jill, and I am UC Health. Laughter clubs bring people together in ways that are unmatched. It helps you decrease stress. It helps you relax more. So at UC Health, they allow us to embrace the community, embrace our members, and do some really wonderful things. Our roots run deep at the University of Colorado Health. Share your roots at imuchealth.org. And we're back here. Chance here, a quick back and forth on a couple of plays here. Gets the Lampkins, though, back in business on offense. Second and nine, but uh, 26 le seconds left here in the half. And they're leading 28 to 12. Gives you a chance to kind of spread your offense, try a few things. Uh, they've been fairly conservative here so far, but a nice play. Last time Svensson on the pick. Moyer back in to throw. Looks like trying to set up a screen. This time breaks out to his run. Gets upfield. Slides down. Short of the first down. Smart play. Trouble is they got to get on the line and snap it again. Flag in the backfield. Well, we do have a uh, probably a holding call back that far, and it is. I'm sure Loveland will uh, go ahead and let him do that again because the clock ran 18 seconds and that'll move him back down inside the 40. I'd rather make somebody go 60 rather than, than 36. It's been a while since I've taken math, but uh, that one seems apparent. Yeah, and there's different ways to get there, but I think the answer's still the same. Yeah. So second down again, but uh, Loveland might as well you know, just they're just going to keep everybody in front of them. Three deep safeties are about 20 yards off the ball. That's when those crossing patterns become pretty dangerous. Give on the delay back to the outside. Ball's on the ground. I think the Lampkins are going to get back on it. There was a mix up there between the running back and the uh, quarterback. That was well. Uh, it almost looked like the quarterback was was going to hand it off to the defender. Yeah, he just about did too. So the ball hits the ground, and then the Lampkins are just going to let the clock run on out. So that's the end of our first half here at French Field. The Lampkins lead 28 to 12. We'll see you after the halftime show. Who wants more peas? Go away. Oh, Daddy hates pop-up ads. <laughs> Go <more>? away. <laughs> Hashtag dinner time. Scroll forward. Share selfie. <gasps> no. Selfie. Scroll forward. <laughs> Delete selfie. Go away. Bookmark. No. Go away. No. no, post photo. Scroll up. Scroll forward. <laughs> Hashtag crazy. The First Bank mobile app. Technology has never been so easy. Halftime here, 28 to 12, our score. And we're going to have performance here by the Purple Regiment for Collins Band, so for your enjoyment. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the field the Purple Regiment Marching Band.
tonight. The band would like to honor its 18 senior members. These 18 young men and women have put in long hours, led by example, and will greatly be missed by the band. Thanks for all you've done, seniors. Catherine Barisis, Bradley Brown, Brian Brown, Emily Burnside, Courtney Dare, Robin Dara, Jason Dunn. Jalisa Escobar, Allison Ketchenick, Catherine McGuire, Abigail May, Taylor Ortiz, Jameson Osgood, Haley Ridgway, Sorrow Song, Brian Sullivan, and Kevin Sullivan. <laughs>
So there you have the uh, Purple Regiment marching band from Fort Collins. And we've got Kevin Lytle here with us for our weekly review of the PSD Sports. And it's a busy time of year, isn't it, Kevin? Yeah, we sure got plenty going on, that's for sure. First off, this game, uh, best we've seen Fort Collins play by far. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm not even close, really. I, I've kind of been waiting for the Sam Bostak show. I, you know, heard all off season. You know, look for him to 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 get some runs, get some carries, and they thought he'd be really productive, but just hasn't gotten the ball that much. Uh, but he looks great tonight. Has se about 75 yards, two touchdowns, and uh, they're kind of running at will. And then complimenting with some good uh, passes from Jacob Moyer, who looks really solid back there. Well, you know, I they just look calm. They just yeah. they just look like they're Hey, this is what we do, and and you know, I, Loveland is probably not known as the toughest defense in the world, but still, uh, they just look like a different team to me. So 28-12, unless they, you know, they have been, they've had the propensity in the past to uh, completely fall apart in a in a second half of a game, but it looks like they're going to be able to take care of this one. Now, is the Rocky and Horizon game tonight? Is yep, it going it's on going right on now? Right now. Do you have a score it's on zero, that? 0-0 after the first quarter. Wow. That's a huge one. I mean. It, if Rocky beats them, they're back in the mix for the conference title. If Horizon with, wins, man, with they're Fairview looking good. coming next yep. weekend, which yep. you'll have another. We'll have another big game here at French Field uh, with that. And then tomorrow night is uh, not only a crosstown game, but that, that's a big game for both uh, programs. Yeah, that's uh, like you say, huge. The way I wrote in my uh, preview for the Colorado one is. They'll be going in opposite directions. Whoever wins right. feels like they can move into the upper tier of the conference. Whoever loses really going to have to scramble, get wins to make the playoffs because both have a lot of those good teams. That, you know, the Horizon, you know, uh, Fossil, Fossil still has Fairview. Uh, Pooter still has Rocky. Legacy for both of them. Right. So so you really want to win that if you're both those teams tomorrow night because it gets pretty daunting moving forward. And with Horizon stepping up kind of from nowhere, yeah. Now it's a very tough the conference. The conference is wide open. Uh, you know, it looks like there are a lot of good teams. There's right. no I, I don't think there's a super great team, but a lot of everyone is good except for Monarch and Mountain Range are obviously kind of the bottom feeders. The uh, Yeah, so the game we're talking about tomorrow night is Pooter and Fossil Ridge. Pretty evenly matched game too. It's I mean, there's really not a clear uh, team that I would say no, the the big difference I see is Pooter's defense has been really good at forcing turnovers, has been pretty generally solid this right. year. Uh, Fossil hasn't been able to rip the ball away as often, and uh, you know if Pooter protects it, you know the first three games they did and they rolled. Last week they coughed up a bunch and lost. So uh, kind of simplistic to say the turnover battle is going to be huge, but and do we have a quarterback controversy at Fossil Ridge? You know, no. uh, Griffin Roberts came in and. He just didn't seem to be able to get going uh, the second half of the yeah, game last week. You know, well, I guess we'll see you tomorrow night. Brian Tinker said he had an arm contusion, so he just oh, couldn't, he okay. just couldn't so throw. So, so he should be, uh, you know, if he's healthy, I, I should say, he'll be the guy. Um, okay. And, and they definitely moved better with him. They, they yeah. just never found rhythm last week. Rocky just basically ran the the clock into the ground. You know, the yeah. Fossil had one we first call quarter it, possession. We call it Novocaine. Yep. They just... You know, it's not pretty at the end. They're, they got more points than you do. Talk a little bit about some of the highlights from the last week here and just uh, PSD schools and some of the other sports that are going on, getting ready for some state competitions and stuff as well. Yeah, a lot of exciting stuff going on. You know, we have a lot of good softball with Fort Collins, Rocky Mountain, and Fossil Ridge, all pretty solid right now. Just um, saw that uh, Collins beat Pooter tonight by one, nine to eight. Yep, definitely. And then uh, obviously a big thing coming up, state golf, Monday and Tuesday here in town at, at the Fort Collins Con Country Club. I was there today talking to, you know, Fossil Ridge is there as a team. They think they have a great shot to win a, a team title. And then Fort Collins has A.J. Ott and Hunter Pa, who were both top ten last year. Hunter was leading after day one. So, we, you know, we could have both individuals and team in the mix to win uh, state titles here in town. So it's pretty cool to have that. That's going to be an exciting two days, Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, we got a lot going on. And, of course, basketball season kicks off here and uh, practice starts in November. We're just about a month away from from basketball, uh, both boys and girls, and got a lot of strong programs in town too. So, anyway, that's Kevin Lytle. Check out his articles and stuff on the Coloradoan. Uh, tomorrow he'll have his uh, write-up on this game and also you see his preview on the Pooter Fossil game. We'll be back with the second half in just a moment. 
Who wants more peas? Go away. Oh, Daddy hates pop-up ads. <laughs> Go <more>? away. <laughs> Hashtag dinner time. Scroll forward. Shave selfie. <gasps> no! Selfie. Go forward. <laughs> Delete selfie. Go away. Then Bookmark. No. Go away. No. no, post photo. Scroll up. Scroll forward. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> crazy. The First Bank mobile app. Technology has never been so easy. So we're back here getting ready for the second half. Randy McCoy, David Haas with you. Want to thank uh, Kevin Lytle from the Colorado one for coming in and kind of giving us a uh, review of the last week in Pooter School District Sports coming up the state golf tournament again. Looking like Fossil Ridge has a chance to possibly win that, Dave. And yeah, they're, they're, they've got a great team depth, which is what you've got to have uh, for any team event like that, golf, cross country, all those things here in the fall. They're, they're measuring individual performances as a team a little differently. <clears throat> A.J. Ott, uh, as we talked about, too, has been one of the top uh, players in the state this year. I uh, think there's a chance he may end up being a golfer at CSU even. So uh, a, a D1 talent in golf, and uh, like I say they're playing a home course, a little home cooking, get to stay in your own bed every night. Uh, so good luck to those local, local yeah. golfers Monday and Tuesday. And I know we've got some really strong uh, cross-country teams in town here, uh, highly ranked. Oh, yeah. Fort Collins is uh, uh, number two got, right there. Got, just got great runners there. I think uh, one young lady, the distance runner, I'm trying to think of her name right now, but she's ranked in the top ten in the country. Yeah. So anyway, here's our second half. Here's Mr. David Haas. Indians kicking off. Uh, the uh, deferral gets the ball back to the Lampkins. In the second half, ball taken at the 14-yard line. Knifing across the outside. Good blocking. Gets out close to the 40-yard line on the tackle. They're trying to get that number. <clears throat> just commiserating with uh, our, your, your halftime guess, uh, Kyle, Kevin Lytle, excuse me, uh, how tough it is to read these numbers. And uh, you, can, you can hear the uh, home hometown address. You know, yeah, the public address announcer is... <clears throat> I think that was Michael Cadillac that time on the carry, and I believe it was number two. You know, we, we, some of these guys say, okay, you need to wear something on, the, on your uniform that's just a little different from everybody else. By the way, the first down for the Lampkins and uh, procedure is going to be called right out of the gate. This is that, this is that time where that coaching kind of comes into play. It's like Lampkins, this is by far the best performance they've had. They're, they're up pretty big. You know, they've got, they've got a, a, a team that... Uh, Got one gift touchdown, earned one in the second half, a little bit for the Indians to hang their hat on there. They did have a drive that uh, ended up in, in a, a touchdown, but uh, failed on two PATs, so it's kind of, uh, you know, it, it doesn't feel like they got a lot done offensively, obviously, and uh, then Fort Collins did move the ball well. Fake that time to give it, pull back on their quarterback straight up the middle. Uh, oh, oh, oh boy. Great tackle downfield, and you saw it, Randy. He was jetting for the other end zone. What quick feet. Yeah, and a great but, tackle downfield, number but, 22. And got him by one foot. I mean, he oh, literally. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that was a diving tackle, and Caden Marin, uh, the junior safety, got him by the ankles and uh, just took him down. Uh, otherwise, that was a six. Great read and acceleration that time. This time to give off the running back to the left side, following his lineman, got his hand right on the back of that lineman. I just love to see that. You know, he's patiently waiting for him to turn around and uh, uh, go. And then he cuts off that block, and, and the lineman knows because that way he's got that pressure there. You just you know you can tell him which way to go, and that's that's the uh, the veteran back there in, in Bostack again, reading those blocks. So a uh, good gain on first down brings up second and six. Twins here to the left side, give again up the middle, fall in the ISO play easily, spun away from one tackle downfield, first down yardage again inside the forty for Bostack. I don't know if uh, Kevin told you the uh, first half statistics rushing for Bostek or not. But he had about a, 75 yards, yeah, I believe. Yeah, he's, he's up over 80-something now and uh, looking towards that century mark. A good night for any running back. Well, as, as he said, we thought this was the year of, of Bostek and uh, haven't really seen him get the kind of carries he's getting tonight. Well, they just haven't had the chance offensively. Oh, there's just a great play of the defensive end that time for Loveland, number 17. Beat the block and kept the contain. Michael Teasdale didn't let uh, Moyer outside, did he? No, 6'195 pounds, and in his spare time, he plays quarterback, huh, yeah, with that I, number? I, yeah, I, that's one of those, uh, how do you get around that end? And uh, Moyer just had no chance and actually did a smart job of just eating it and going down. We've seen a Fairview quarterback sort of doubled back three or four times on yeah, that. Yeah, we did, didn't we? Talking about the balance in the uh, 5A league, the front-range league. Picked oh, off this oh, time oh. Right up the middle. 
And that's uh, going to be yeah, that's six. Gonna be that's easy. Six. six points if he gets around the outside of the uh, running back to be taken down. Yep, slips off the tackle, goes in the end zone. We've got a flag downfield, though. I think it's going to be a personal foul that's after Dunkelman. the play. That Dunkelman picked it off. They were trying to run the screen play, and he laid off of it. Moyer, just uh, like I said, that's the experience in that, that uh, kind of play that's a little more of a feel play. I don't know if that touchdown is going to count, actually. That was an outstanding run, though. Yeah. Well, he knows what to do with the ball in his hand. But I think we're going to get an unsportsmanlike conduct kind of call down here. It was well away from the play. It was nowhere near the play. So we're going to wait for our, our referee. Touchdown is going to be good. And it is going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct. I am kind of that Sven Gali. Actually, it's going to be called against the Lampkins. No, excuse me. Against the Indians, Indians. as what I kind of thought. The surprise would have been, okay, now we got it both ways, though. We'll do it down here for the PAT. So a great play. All of a sudden, Spark put a little spark back in Loveland. And, uh, you know, the few, the proud over there, they've got a couple hundred fans who showed up to support them there. That, all of a sudden, that sideline came alive. Well, we were just, Kevin and I were talking, is, you know, Fort Collins really ought to be able to put this one away here, but that's not the way you're going to do it. No, you know, like a finesse play there, that's one of the toughest things for Moyer, not getting a lot of time here. Um so they are going to. This is actually going to be on the PAT. So that's certainly going to rule the uh, point after a touchdown kick out. Moves the ball out to the 18-yard line. A 15-yard penalty. Well, you don't see that every day, do you? No, because usually it goes as a penalty like that goes on the kickoff. So a kicker out there, Brendan Butts, the junior. Excuse me, that's the holder. Kicker is going to be Everhart, number seven. He kicked it strong, but he hooked it just like yeah. here. Good snap, good kick. Plenty good high strong. at the distance. And just to the left again, so a little strong leg. He's got uh, there, there's some people talking about this one, too, here. There's <laughs> Coaches are saying, uh, that looked, I didn't think it was terribly far to the left. And the official on the near side underneath the goalpost says just a little bit. Uh, it looked good to me from here. It, uh, it certainly didn't look. Way yeah. off. <laughs> no, no, it was close. It went over, it, like I said, it was high. It was up over the top. Yeah, so that's really, it's hard to tell, but it, you're standing right underneath it, aren't no, you? Yeah, you're, you're never going to win that call. He's the best, the by, best yeah. you by far, unless you've got a camera on the end zone that uh, yep. does show that, and it generally doesn't. And uh, no, you go with that call there. That was not a tough one. And there's no uh, replay in high school either. Nope. So. So after the uh, interception for six, two big turnovers lead to tur touchdowns for the Indians tonight. What an interesting game, huh? Yeah, we've had a little bit of everything, haven't we? So 28-18, it's a football game again. You get ten points, you know, just a two-score game. We've had a, a butt pump, <clears throat> punt block. We've had pick six. We've had... How did that go again? Was that a butt, butt block punt? punt? No, a butt punt block. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that's the only, well, I won't say that because that's the only time we're going to say it to here. Well, that'll yeah. come back to haunt me, of yeah. course. No, that's a. Can't make that up, folks. We <laughs> leave it alone. So, see, Mariano, a little punch kick down the sideline again. Skids it inside the 25. Picked up by, by Lang again. Takes up field. Good hard run. He knows he's going to get hit. Corey Lang just takes it up to the 40. He's, Lankins will say, fine, I'll take he, that. He's gotten some of, some famous hits this year, too, had not he? When he first got in the, uh, his first game in, he got. Oh, he was the knocked around a couple yeah, times. Yeah, he's a tough kid. We know that already. Yeah, he came in and got and to did some see good his things. dad or talk to meet his dad out here. And well, he had an older sister. We got to broadcast in uh, right. for football a couple years. A good basketball player for the Lampkins. Went and played on on for a year or so in college. Lampkins trying to get their offense on the field. Yeah, the Lampkins at times can kind of lose their focus for a half and so blitz coming by love that doesn't happen here oh good call against the blitz on the backside bostek steps outside there somebody's got a hold of a jersey and a nice job by 55 for the indians hey, it don't matter yeah, does it? zach swarto out uh, that is most of these jerseys that's tough to do anymore that's that's a young man with a pretty strong grip that's why there's tight so yeah you that, can't you, grab you them, don't huh? get anything like that yeah Either way, good run by Bostak. That was a great call. They blitzed uh, into that far side, and they went ran around the backside of it. Blitz shown again in the gaps. Kind of a shovel pass back on the inside here. And another jersey tackle. One thing that says that you can grab the... 72. The, yeah, 72 gets... That's the kicker again. Uh, uh, but uh, what that tells me, too, Randy, you're tackling high. Yeah. You're, you're getting up around the shoulders. And uh, Harpham... Uh, 
you know, he just grabbed there barely. Number four goes down on the shovel pass. I like the play call. That, gives that, was, a, that was a cool play. <clears throat> but you miss somebody like that. Well, if you're grabbing with your hands and not driving with the body, you're going you're gonna to whiff. Boyer hits us. He throws it downfield. Had his tight end going on the edge. A little bit of a lead, but uh, nice job there. And that's a good show right there. Number nine, Dylan Jackson. You see after the play there, he put a pretty good pop on Moyer. You know, kind of helped him up there and give him a pat on the well, shoulder and, and, and said, nice job. And he didn't hit him as hard as he could have either. Oh, no, you know? you're right. He could have unloaded. The ball was away. So true punt formation now coming for the Lampkins. I don't think there's going to be a debate about that. Although it's only fourth and five, so. Yeah, Calvin Kelly back. And One it, hopper, and, and it's yep. a fake. It's going to go around the right side. Got a couple blocks up he inside got the it. traffic. Got the first down. Cross midfield for the yardage. Never a doubt about that. We've got a Lampkin got down. He's not good. He's back up there. Probably just a little ankle sprain. I'm sure his mom likes to hear that. Just, yeah. Just a little ankle sprain. Yeah, just a little ankle sprain. As opposed to a big one. Yeah, that's uh, a little It wasn't really, really ever any those. doubt, fourth and five. That, <coughs> yeah. Did you really think they were going to punt? No, that was a, a great formation call. And that's that's a tough break for the Indians. Well, they only needed the, five yards, so they didn't really need too much fooling. <laughs> no. That was a tough break for the Indians, too, not getting that covered. So first down for the Lampkins across midfield. And I don't know how many times they've played for Collins, but they should have known that he wasn't going to. Keeper by Moyer spun down after a gain of about three. You've seen Coach Rice long enough. You, he's predictable in his unpredictability. Yeah, well, it, it's not a not a problem uh, going for it there. A little slow to get up that time. Also, the linebacker Dylan Jackson again. Uh, he's got a little arm issue going on there. Bubble pass to the outside. Now Bobble, though, taken by Lang. Necktie collar tackle there again. Yeah. A little high one. We talked about that earlier. I think you'll learn to try to duck under those, but uh, sword out a tackle again. Zach Sword out 55 for the Indians. Some of those other loving players up front there we talked about before. Trammell, Kyle Trammell, number 76, 65. On the other ones, try to get the rest of those uh, defensive linemen in there. Short side field, just a top there again. Another another high tackle. Take it down. They're spinning around. There's. Getting a lot of grabbing done here, and uh, like I say it can be forceful on a tackle, but uh, people are going to start running through, and you're going to start breaking fingers. I'll tell you one thing, Randy, that's true about football. Uh, your hands get in the way a lot. That, that's the end result, generally predictable. Others on that up front defense we did talk about, too. Mimosa, number 37, 44, Abela. Svensson, 45, and Swart out, number 55. McLuhan, Teasdale, and Marin. Stiano back there, too. Saw him make the big play earlier. Dunk him in once in a while. This time a punt, and it's shanked off the right side of the foot, and it's going to go out. Might have advanced the ball a couple yards. And that's <coughs> why you fake. Yeah, you might have uh, had the same situation <laughs> again there. This time the ball is just a dead shank to the right, so they're going to take off, uh, just gain a step it off and put the ball just across the 40-yard line. Well, as, as people may or may not know, you don't recruit for your high school team. <laughs> and if you don't have a punter that goes to your high school, uh, punting yeah. can be a challenge, as, no, is, and, as is extra points and field sure. goals. And yeah. there's no given that you're going to have one of those attending your school. Yeah, we've had we've been blessed. I mean, Collins had one of the best place kickers in a long time. Uh, the Welch kid that went to Wisconsin and one of the leading scorers. And Alex Kinner, Bra Braxis Davis last year here with uh, Rocky and Pooter. Follow this time by Everhart. Gets behind the block. Has a good chance to go upfield. Runs out of tackles. Taken back down, Colson That's Thurman really the gets first, him just about the 30. He's their leading rusher. That's the first time he's really been able to break through. Well, I like that's just a follow, basically. You do the fake, but then you follow the back through the same hole. That fake, that back you fake to turns into your lead blocker, and uh, that was executed really well. I mean, they're trying to play downhill now. They're only down by 10 points. There's seven and a half minutes left here in the third quarter. This game's not over. No, not even close, and they've got all the momentum right now, too. Yep. Pankrak that time spins around, pushing forward. And the three missed extra points start to come back. Are really. Well, and then you think about that long fourth down pass. They went for it and hit the man there. It just didn't get completed. I mean, there's a little boy. Well, this could be a very tight game. And uh, if Collins lets off the gas a little bit here, you know, you get complacent. You know, we talk about they're 16, 17, 18 years old. That's, that's, there's ebbs and flows in every game. And right now, Loveland's trying to capitalize on a little bit of a, a move their way. I mean, on paper, it's probably a pretty even game. So, yep. it's, you know, 
Yeah, and you got the big touchdown off the, uh, the opening punt. Everhart runs his left this time, fakes the option. He has a big lane, cuts up field. He's going to go to the end zone. Dives to the pylon. Touchdown. Great run by Aiden Everhart. Uh, they're he can mark him short. No, he got him down there. Okay. I, I thought he, he put his hands up instead of waving time. He's not even touchdown. But uh, uh, Aiden Everhart on about a 31-yard run fakes the option, and he had he hit that at full speed, didn't he? Yes, he did. And young man is really quick. We, have, we did not really see any of that in the first half. But, you know, based on his numbers, he is a it's, lot of the offense. Yeah, no, he leads the team both rushing in and uh, passing, obviously, is the quarterback here. Now they're set up again in that swinging gate formation. Only the center and the quarterback back over here now. Looks at the sideline to see what the play is going to be. Well, they really need to go for two here. I, I, yeah, this is, uh, you might as well put something together. A lot of times this is where the precursor for running your two. Okay, get back now. They're going to kick it. And then that's when you come back and pull your, your fake play. But the PAT, if it's up and good, this one has a little bit more right down the middle look to it, and it is good. So after that push and pull of that uh, first couple of turnovers and everything else, that uh, two touchdowns here in the third quarter by the Indians are back within three, 28 to 25. And uh, this would be uh, the opposites. This is the best possible case scenario for Loveland and the worst one for Fort Collins because now they can't seem to get out of their own way. Yeah, no, they're tr they got a little loose on offense, trying to do a few things, and uh, which I agree with. I, I, you got you've got to get Moyer some repetition in different plays, otherwise he just doesn't have the experience. You can't do it in practice. It's not the same live fires in the other as during the game itself. And uh, that time, the you know, last of the script there was just that little bubble pass that uh, Dunkelman saw it coming. And, and that's, those are the nuances an experienced quarterback uh, shows, and an inexperienced one just doesn't have the chance. You don't have those repetitions again to uh, kind of hide that screen, to kind of buy play time on that. So Harpen back again now, deep single safety. Seymour again to kick off for Loveland. And this is going to be a big series now for the uh, Lampkin offense. Well, Loveland is running downhill like Fort Collins did in the first half, really. Excellent I mean, point. And Fort Collins makes some kind of error here. Or something. Yeah, ball it's bobbled around a little bit there. Gets up the up, up field. But Loveland's playing with a lot more uh, tenacity right now, no, they're, too. No, they're kind of after it there now. And you know what? Their defense right now, it's one of those times where I, I would just get that steady dose of number 30. I'd give Bostak the ball till he just doesn't, right. doesn't have a chance to carry it anymore. I'm not sure if, if he's in now or if that's actually a little rotation going back and forth. Fullback is Colson. Single tight end gives the running back in the I formation. Basically a straight ISO lead. A little slow to develop. Nice job of plugging it up and then getting behind the play. Linebackers get all over him. Very hesitant. Yeah, that wasn't there wasn't anywhere to go. That was uh, Bostak again there. That time they just a great job of setting it right down there in the gap. The Loveland defenders didn't allow, they weren't moved off the ball at all. And they credit credit the man right there in the middle, number 56. Uh, Jaden Manu, the sophomore, six foot four, three hundred pounds, sophomore. That's the big bell cow. Yeah, they couldn't get him out of the way, could they? No, they couldn't. So single formation pistol back there, running back. Moyer back to throw, gets around the outside, trying to get oh, away. Oh, and he fifty six got him. Yep. What a play. Yeah, and that's the, we we're just talking they, about him, Jaden Manu again. Oh, that, that my the, the goodness, big, the big he sophomore. Just, he just completely collapsed the yeah. offensive uh, line of. <coughs> Where's he been? That's what you call the bull rush. Man alive. Yeah, he's a he's a sophomore, he's a six fourth, and he and he's not. He's fat. Three hundred <laughs> usually in high school means awful round. Yeah, and, and he, he is, is not. Proportioned. Boy, look at that! I guarantee you, there's some people looking at him. Yeah. This time though, they run around in the middle of the field. It's gonna be a foot race down the middle. Chance for a block. Colson Thurgood shows one off there. He's gonna run out. Moyer tries to get around the last safety block. Caught him there at number 22 again. Just doing a nice job in the backfield. That's what your safety's got to do, Randy. And uh, Caden Morin once more saves the touchdown. But uh, uh, Boyer does what he does best right now with his feet, and that's what they needed to win and get back oh, out of the game. Oh, they needed that, and, and big he, time. he duked out the, the big man. Uh, that went yeah, by he, there. he went right around he, him. He got, and, a, yeah. his, got his hand on him, but that was it. Yeah, no, and he, great acceleration that time by Jacob Moyer. Straight up field for about 60 yards plus. Now first and ten, ball off the Postak patient goes around the outside, keeps it inside. 
Umpire throws holding. his flag, so we know that's coming back. Ball is, he was tackled down inside the 10. A lot of yellow on the field tonight. Yes, there has been. Uh, Quite a few flags. We, I don't think we've gone more than four or five plays in a row without something happening, but uh, closely uh, fought game. All of a sudden now, you know, it's 446 in third. You're only up by three. So the spot foul takes it back at just outside the 20-yard line, so it's going to be first and 15. Game looks like it's going to be a dogfight here at the end. Stay tuned here on streamingsports.com. Bring you the rest of this match. Moyer on the roll out to the right. Has to get to the edge. Makes it around the corner. Fires back over the middle. Low throw. Boy, number 17 almost got him. Yeah. Yeah. Harpum of the intended receiver, though. The ball hits the ground. Tough throw, but a good job of just getting rid of it, wasn't it? Yeah, and he was fortunate that he didn't get sacked. Yeah, there was. It was pretty good pursuit that time. Michael Teasdale, number 17, as you said. That outside end rush in linebacker for the Indians. Uh, came across pretty strong. So second down. Need to get down there a little further, get probably in field goal range. I see, I like that better. He was, a little bit more he was moving, he was moving and he was more in the center of the field. Yep. But uh, great play by number 72 there. Well, Seymour comes off the end and makes the tackle. But, uh, you know, just like say, as you said there, he was, he was going forward and uh, uh, I, I think that was Luke Weaver that time on the reception, just trying to cut it upfield, but uh, good turn back and uh, play recognition. Gap blitz coming now for the Indians, trying to step the outside, keep more from going around. Fires it to the end zone. He's got a man wide open. Catch in the far corner of the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown. What a great throw. Not sure how he got behind the defender, but... Well, I'm going to fill in that blank because I was looking at the... There was two, two receivers down there, and they just did a little cross pattern. And I think that was Harpham. I'm pretty sure it was Kyler Harpham down there. The veteran uh, Harpham knows how to kind of rub that other player off, and they, they had two guys stand there. He was 10 yards behind anybody, and, uh, uh, you know, and Moyer did a nice job of throwing that ball to the back of the end zone. Nobody had a chance to that ball other than Harpham, and a good catch. So one touchdown brings out the uh, Lampkin offense and uh, puts them back in the end zone. So they uh, get that score back out, PAT pending. Good snap. Kick is going to be up. And good. So 10-point lead again for Fort Collins. Lampkin's here at French Field. It kind of makes you... Kind of has the feel that... Uh, who kind of has the ball last might... Uh, yeah. I mean, it depends on if Loveland scores again here. The, the classic shootout. Well, in, in both teams right now, I'd say the offenses are starting to go. You get a little bit worn out, you know, later in the game here, but uh, you should know what's going to work best for you. And I think both quarterbacks finding that those running lanes are are, are open and uh, taking advantage of them. Your defense, your linebackers start getting tired and uh, good athletes on both sides of the ball at the quarterback position. And there's our Lampkin in the... Uh, End zone again, working on his cardio and his shoulders because that's going to be one tough uh, wake-up call in the morning. I'm just going to go ahead and give him all those push-ups right there. I didn't see the start of it, but we're going to assume that uh, he knocked off all 35. But if yeah. you do the math at home, uh, he's well into uh, the 100-plus for the night. Uh, so the bunch kickoff formation again. Last time was an onside kick fake, or actually onside kick, and they didn't get it. Both teams tonight, uh, you know, neither team really has a kicker that drives the ball deep. Allen, though, this time pushes downfield, caught at the 10, fumble, dropped on the ground, picked up again by Loveland, no blocking out in front of him. Does a nice job of just going straight south, which is what you got to do. There's no time to get cute there, is there? So the kickoff taken. Kind of deep, going to bobble there just for a second, though. Cade Marin, number 22, turns it upfield. Ball's going to be at the 20, though, so a good result that time on the deeper kickoff for the Lampkins. Kickoff returns are so much about timing. So Everhart, after the last drive in a two long runs for touchdown, and two long runs got him into the end zone. 
Lampkin show blitz. Everybody's coming forward. Everhart pulls it out. Still struggles forward. I thought he had his knee down back there in the backfield, but kept going. Good read, though. He saw all those gaps being filled, didn't he? He just went around the outside. Brings up a second and eight. 317 left here and counting in the third quarter. A very quiet night. The uh, Lampkins got off that big lead, and uh, kind of the crowd's kind of been out of it. Blitz the outside. Everhart turns on fires. Almost a pickoff. Great cut on the ball out there. Can't tell if that, I believe it was Colson Thurgood. Yeah, he, just from that inside strong safety position, he saw that coming, and that ball, Everhart never saw him as he turned around and tried to throw that long pass. I mean, that was from the middle of the left to the right hash, clear on the outside. And uh, Thurgood just missed getting both hands on that for the pick, and if he had kept his feet, he would have walked in. So third and eight, once again, third down and long is kind of where the Loveland offense has been all night. Everhart back in. Pangrak behind him, number 30. Haven't seen much from uh, uh, Calvin Kelly, number 11. He really hasn't had the plays he had earlier in the game. So after all that indecision, a timeout's going to be taking, uh, taken on the field, and we'll step aside. Wayne, everyone knows by now that Trader's Country Stores have the best car washes around. They don't need to see you standing in the car wash explaining the undercarriage wash. The rocker panel spray, the protective finish application, and the jet dryer. No, Wayne, all you have to do is see the beautiful shine on my nice clean car. No muss, no fuss, and I'm certainly not all wet. <laughs> you won't get soaked at Schrader Country Store car washes, just shiny clean. Also want to thank our banner sponsor, Rocky Mountain Youth Sports, rmusports.com. And Dorsey over there at uh, Rocky Mountain Youth Sports. They do the junior teams for basketball for all four high schools. Several high schools around there also offer administrative uh, services to club teams. If you just want to coach a team and want somebody else to take care of all the administration, they do that too. So rmusports.com, go ahead and look that up and check that out. Also the Rocky Mountain Fever. And you also can watch these games on their websites. They've got the link there as well. So... Uh, Want to thank them for sponsoring our banners. Third in out for the Indians. Blitz shown. They fake it. Drop back out of it. Though Everard's got to step up. He's got a man down the sideline. Wide open. Long play comes across. The, it's going to be picked by the safety. And that could be. Running down the far sideline. Got the edge inside the 15-yard line. Goes out. He saw his man wide open, but it was too easy to make that throw. Kyler Harpin back there just like he did against Foster Ridge a few weeks ago. Just let him make that throw. It's a short run when you got to throw it that far. I mean, the ball is on the right hash mark, and everybody did a nice job stepping up, but the play recognition was just too late, and it was right away. Harpham just said, thank you. Great well, break it's, on the it's, ball. It's, the ang it's the angle. It, it's, easy, yeah. it's easy to see it. Yep. And, but it, from the quarterback's point of view, you know, you see your guy running down the... And you always believe in your arm a little yeah. bit more than you should. Yeah, you should. Because that's a ball can when you, you, say, you get fired uh, in there. Yeah. Jay Cutler? Yeah, exactly. Give the ball off the left side now, straight forward. Spins out of a couple tackles. Lampkin runner down inside the 10. Coming up on uh, 2.30 left here in the third quarter. Care that time by number 25, Jake Leone. Sophomore. I'm trying to think of that's 25, but that's actually Weaver. That's got to be 26 Weaver. Those, those numbers are just so tough to read. Pistol formation again now for the Lampkins. Fake to give. Moyer goes around. He steps on the inside. He's got He's a lane. Walk in. Into the end zone easily. i tell you what, just falling behind. Great big block down there. Nice job by the lineman to pull up in that hole. Come around that outside and, and really made that play happen. And the Loveland defense has been the medicine for Collins. Offense has been looking for it. Well, yeah, that was that was just too easy. They, they now really we've got on a, the running back, and uh, oh, we get a flag after the flag. Play. I think uh, you've got the Aunt. coaches out there inviting him to a Christmas party, I believe. Now yeah, they're taking holiday planning already. You think? Well, he came way out on the 
field, so I think he might have wanted to get his attention. Sideline warning. First one is going to be a penalty. Now the referee is going to go over and talk with the coach. Obviously, the coach saw something that didn't get called, probably a holding or something, but I'm not sure he got the answer he wanted to hear either. I don't think that's possible, actually. <laughs> no, that's uh, one of the more passionate games going. It's a, it's a physical game, and things happen so quickly. You know, there's just a few seconds of action, and uh, if it's something's missed and you see it, boy, that, that's just tough to take. It's Grobenstein again on the extra point. That one's blocked. Nice job by the Indians coming across that time. Timing was a little off. I think Grabenstein actually wasn't really ready for the snap because he had a little hitch kick to try to catch up to that one. Either way, the Indians got all over it, blocked it. So 41 to 25, a 16 point lead. And we'll see if we have time uh, for the Indians to come back, but we're gonna take time out up here right now. Where is the middle of nowhere? You can't find it on a map. There's no looking up its address. And there are no GPS coordinates to punch in or freeway exit signs to take. The fact is, the middle of nowhere is pretty hard to find. And that's just fine with us. Toyota, let's go places. And there's your Lampkin. There's the count. and. Uh I think one of the best things about the Lampkin here having that north end zone in the second half, that uh, University of Colorado Health Systems ambulance is just out there in the uh, yeah. back of the end zone for him because uh, if he doesn't start cramping up, I'm going to be surprised. Speaking of that, I had to go to the University of Health Clinic up there by Marymount. And nice folks up there. I had to go in there and check out this thing in my chest. Oh, yeah, it's time of year, isn't it? Yep. So did Andrew Allen, the kicker this time. Another deep driving kick. Takes it down about the 10, though. This time cleanly caught. Stepping up field. Good hit. Good tackle. Right up there. Is, uh, keeps that return inside the 30. Love. Michael Cadlick, the cornerback, uh, number two, the junior. Nice, secure tackle. Loveland will take over. A minute 55 left here in the third quarter. Few substitutions out there now for the Lampkins. Not too many. In those last last uh, series, uh, Corey Lang was in playing safety. Also, some other players in and out of the game out there too. Connor McGraw, the junior linebacker, playing there next to Shulman in the middle. Always building for the next year. You're even though you're nowhere near done this year, you've got it. You've got to get the underclassmen time, don't you? Mm -hmm. Linebackers reading on the Dunkelman carry that time and just a. A good read. There was a three-man line down line, and then the four linebackers off about five yards trying to flow there. But guys kind of stood let the play come to them instead of going up to meet them. And Coach Rice was out there uh, right, right off the bat saying, you can't stand still. You could just see him moving his hand and say, get up field. So second and three. You know, the, the Indians swung off inside. They really haven't stayed ahead of the chains, have they? They haven't had the short, short yardages well, after first or second and, down. And you really don't know what they're trying to do offensively they yep you know they'll run the ball pretty decent there for first down then they'll throw something deep and yeah so that you, you're not really sure what their scheme is offensively well Dunkelman like I said there's two carries and a first down yardage I mean it, he is that that proverbial hammer looking for a nail I mean he he loves that straight ahead running you can tell he's got great power and he, when he gets in the open he does have the speed to get gets for the long run but uh, between the tackles I think is where he's gonna make his living and they just haven't had that success consistently and there's lots of space between the tackles. And, you know, the linebackers have to come up like oh, they yeah. did there. Yeah, they filled that time pretty well. I look to see Everhart. Uh, uh, you need to start pulling it there, too, because the, with the clock running, we're down to 50 seconds left here in the third quarter. You know, you're, you're down by 16. Yeah, you've had some success this half, but uh, you didn't make up for the lack of success in the first half yet. It's still basically you've held serve if you're the Lampkins and you keep that lead at 16. Well, you can't create touchdowns. Second and nine now for the Indians. Ball in their own 36. Twin receivers both sides. Everhart singling to the outside receivers this side. Blitz coming. Scrambles to his left. Swallowed up from behind. Nice blitz upfield. They're just, you can't go sideways that long and, and look downfield. Just too slow developing. 
tackle Great. there. Yeah, nice tackle, uh, Alex Doble, the senior defensive lineman. Well, just great pursuit on that play. Oh, yeah. Get on side and run behind those blocks. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter. Our score, the Lampkins Fort Collins 41, Loveland Indians 25. We'll be back in just a moment. I am UC Health. I am UC Health. I'm Jill, and I am UC Health. Laughter clubs bring people together in ways that are unmatched. It helps you decrease stress. It helps you relax more. So at UC Health, they allow us to embrace the community, embrace our members, and do some really wonderful things. Our roots run deep at the University of Colorado Health. Share your roots at imuchealth.org. So we're back here. Nice, cool breeze. Yeah, starting to get some air back. I coming it, in here. Apparently, and, uh, it rained a little bit earlier. A little bit of slight mist coming down in here in the booth. We didn't know that, and uh, frankly, the cooler air feels pretty good up here. Yes, it does. A great night again here in the uh, the city for a game. Thanks for tuning in on Stream at Sports. Phil Mildred and Stream at Sports .com doing a, an excellent job between football and volleyball. Got, got this him fall. on double duty tonight. Yeah. He's overdoing. He's earning the title. Producing and color commentating over it uh, with Sam Peters. So the start of the fourth quarter now for the Indians. They've got the ball in their own 31, third and about 14. They need to get past the 45-yard line for a first down. And, Randy, I think they need one of those uh, don't-have-long-time scores because uh, Lampkin still can run the ball pretty well. Everhart steps up out of pressure, looking downfield. Got his eyes there, fires. Ball just tipped away and, and dropped, and uh, a little bit of contact downfield. Seaver was looking for something. I didn't. I didn't see the contact. Uh, well, there hasn't been any real separation no. was, with the receivers. Every pass that he's thrown like that, there's been uh, traffic yeah. around. And well, uh, that was such a long developing play. It was all squeezed into the sideline. Everything was happening. There's about a dozen players uh, from the numbers to the outside as that finally unfolded, and, and they snapped the ball on the left hash, and he rolls his right. You know, you're, you're not going to have a lot of room. He, he's close to getting it in there, but it just didn't happen. Good student section here tonight for Fort Collins. Dances around, makes the punt. It's going to go over the top of the head of Harper. Big bounce for the Indians. That is actually, they're going to have to rush to get down there and make sure it doesn't go in the end zone. Wow, what a punt. Yeah, that, that did exactly what you wanted to do. That, that end over end punt, he kind of, this time, I think he kind of looked for Kyler Harper, didn't he? Yeah, I'm he did. I'm not kicking it to number four again. I wouldn't. That's one of those guys to avoid. Just a heads-up play back there by the, Ever the Everhart, the quarterback. I'll be real punter. honest with you. He had a seam to run through. I... I don't know. It looked to me like he could get 10 yards, but, you know, they could have. They uh, needed about 16. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Sim yeah. Simple math, yeah. huh? Yeah, they were, they, he did have that crease there, but, no, that, that was a pretty good job there. If you can you can bottle him up here, you know, if you're, you're Fort Collins here, you just need to punch it out, get a first down, run that clock. You're down to 1137. Not much taken off on those few plays that time by the Indians. And, uh Fort Collins could oh, really put a, put a nail in this thing here. Yeah, with a long drive and any kind of score. Weaver again, the carry. Nice two hands, comes inside the tackle, takes it out close to the 10-yard line, about to the 11. Just a nice job again on the inside of that offensive line for the Lampkins. Just steady. Good night for them. Get in the pistol formation, trips to the top of your screen. Give the ball to Weaver again over the left side. Straight forward now. And I think he's got first down yardage. So if you're the Lampkins, that's just the medicine you need. You need just four and five at a time. Keep the clock running. Reset those chains. Another first down. Take your time. That's one of the, that's one of the things now. You just got to be... That's where the coaches can influence us a little bit here. Start bringing that play just a little slower. Recall the play like they're doing now and give them a chance to uh, uh, run a little bit more clock off. Got a final here from Fossil Ridge High School. Fossil Ridge wins over Greeley West 3-1 to in volleyball. If you're watching very closely there, our umpire was probably starting to have, going to need Tommy John surgery at the end yeah. of the night because that's going to be about, we're getting close to double figures and holding calls between both teams. He threw that one right in there. Loveland blitz from the back side that time, and the play went left, and I thought, okay, there's a chance for really to break Are you one saying through. he's reached his 180 uh, innings? His pitch count is way up there, yes, in the vernacular of the season right now with uh, 
We're getting close to playoff baseball. It's one of my favorite times of the year. College football and pro football are both, you know, they're, they're off and running. There's already arguments about who should be where and what. But, uh, yeah, congratulations um, to my Cardinals for clinching, three-peating the uh, Central Division title. Yeah, no, it's like everything starts to happen this month, and that's one of the best times of the year for sports fans. Good fake that time where he brings it right back up field, falls behind his blocks, gains about five or six because the uh, – Actually, Harper was back in, not Moyer. A little Wildcat offense now. I think they'll probably stick with that for a few. Nope, back in the quarterback shuffle here. Moyer back in the game now. Second 15, they need to get out to their 33-yard line for first down. Randy, I don't know if that's as material as just make sure you've got enough room to, to, to run. They've run two minutes off the clock here so far. Fort you know, Collins is the epitome of uh, interchangeable, aren't they? Yeah. Several kids doing several things. Oh, nice break. Nice cut up the field that time. Good eight, nine yards. Weaver, Weaver and Bostek, pretty good one-two punch, aren't they? They're excellent. And, again, you know, Loveland's got to do something really special here. To Well, nobody's put a ball in the ground at the worst possible time, you know, or where, where it's other than, you know, the, the, the butt block, as you put it there in that first half. Right. Uh, uh, Nobody's gotten that short field other than the one time. Roll out right side now. Good blocking in the front. Got the man open in the slot out there. First Slides down. down. And uh, I kind of forgot to what level we're playing out there. Michael Cadillac, nice nice job of just catching the ball securely. He had first down yardage and uh, popped right back and wanted to take off running. But uh, Cadillac just got to the first down yardage. Moyer, nice job just laying it out there for him. And, and Cadillac came from that backside. They just kind of lost him in the shuffle. Good play call by the OC for the uh, Lampkins. Big first down and, and kind of a backbreaker if you're the Indians because that uh, gets them out of jail, out past the 30, and uh, now you get a fresh set of downs and you're down to nine minutes. Throwback screen now for the Lampkins. Got their tight end down this side, gets one man up. Oh, great hustle across the field. Number 44, the Indians. A little play recognition and uh, Dane Avila. If not Abila, if I mispronounced that, I'm sorry. But that was a great effort by that young man, 44 there. It was. Because there was a lot of room to run, wasn't there? Yeah, that was Jake, Jake Leon, six foot three, tight end. Uh, kind of reminds you of going back to a, a, a tight end of a couple, you know, Storbo catching the tight right. end screen like that. The roll runway, throw it back to Storbo and watch him go 60 yards on this field here more than once. So second and short, though, still a six-yard gain. Give the fullback up the middle. I think it's Grauberger, tripped up, gains of a couple. Bring up third and short. And Fort Collins is uh, very content to do what they're doing. They've taken oh. off four minutes yep. off of this quarter well, so they far. Put, they put Grauberger and, and Thurgood occasionally at fullbacks, certainly undersized for fullbacks, but uh, just good, smart football players. And... Uh, Kind of a quarterback sneak and a kind of a scrum. I, the pile really didn't move much in the favor of the Lampkins at all there, so I'm pretty sure he's going to be short. And they're going to mark him well short of the. Uh, didn't look like 41. Much of a sneak because everybody no. knew it was happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen where they put the ball yet. Referee already said you're short. Yeah, the ball is it's short of the 41, and the mark on the other side is clearly on the other side of the 41. Harpham going back now to uh, punt. So they're so they so it looks so like so they're not going to punt. Yeah, on, I've never seen Fort Collins punt on fourth and inches. Inches. Yeah, but right now you've got no returner back there for the Indians. They aren't buying it either. But still, pretty good chance just to get the ball on the other side of the field, let the clock run. Pooch kick does go across and hits about the 29, bounces a couple yards and be down at the 26. It's a good thing I didn't say I'll eat my hat, huh? Yeah. Well, you know, it's it, right there just made way too much sense, even though that was you know, one of those right there for the taking, and I'm sure they had to chew on it for a second because they wanted to go for it. But, you know, smart football gains you a few minutes, and, and you're, you're up as much as they are. And as you said, they took off all that time. We're down to 7-14 in the fourth quarter. Well, the only way this is that's a bad play is if they give up a one-play score right now. Yeah. You know, but even if Loveland came down and spent five minutes and scored, it's – yeah, you don't have you much know, time you left. You don't have time. That doesn't mean they're not going to give it their best shot. Indians have competed well tonight. Well, they've scored 25 points. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if they didn't get it one more touchdown at least. 
Novak. Everhart looks back, takes a straight up the middle, takes off running, spun around, tripped up. Only gained about five or six. He had a lot more to go. Good hustle downfield on just a tackle. Kind of grazes around before he makes the decision to go upfield. I think if he'd have, you know, yeah, made that decision a little quicker, he might have got three almost, or four more yards. I don't, I don't know if that's just a read or it's an actual call because, right. like I say, he did kind of circle around a bit and try to find that open gap. Obviously, he's got a long stride. He gets going, but... Uh, Took a little bit of time off the clock. Second and five now for Loveland. Steps up again. Sees that same gap. Everybody's pursuing out there to the far side. First down yardage. Ball out to the 40. But right now, Fort Collins, they'll let them take five and six yards. Even if you get well, a few this first is downs. how you become the leading rusher on the team right yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. Take it in your own hands. And, uh, I mean, they're, they're defending that rollout, which, you know, they've run so much. They've not thrown very well from the pocket tonight for sure. And uh, they're going to make him come back inside there. And then I'd rather try to catch him to four or five yards and give up a big play right now. Klosky, Baylor McCloskey go across in the motion there, just showing that man defense that uh, Lampkins do play. That's a true man defense because they're trying to load up that front box with as many linebackers play as they can. So as I say, McCloskey just followed his man across the field that time. And uh, the secondary tonight, you got to applaud the way the Lampkins have played uh, behind the linebackers, haven't they? Mm-hmm. So, again, tomorrow night we have a uh, big crosstown rivalry game. Big game. Hooter and Fossil. Yeah, there are two teams right now. If you don't stop the trend, they're going. Uh, Hooter looked for a four-win season. That time there's a first throw we've seen caught by uh, Kelly here in, in quite a while. Calvin Kelly, a couple big plays early, but that's the first time we got to really call his number. Nice throw by Everhart. Yeah, through a bullet. Pooter, Pooter can go to four and one, a, a big jump up from last season, and Fossil... Uh, really needs to get a win to kind of get their confidence back a little bit of rhythm. Well, Fossil wins. They're, they're three and two, and so is Booter. So, I yeah. mean, they're... Yep. Yeah, it's that time your season starts uh, trending up or down, and you don't have uh, have those moments to do over again, especially the city games. Everhart on the snap rolls to his left, fires across the middle. It's Kelly again, but a short, short gain only. Eberhard's got kind of a unique yep. motion. Throw good on the tackle. Yeah, he does. He kind of keeps that arm down, doesn't he? He doesn't really turn his shoulders. So just They'll let him complete those short little dinks right in front of him. Nothing really happens. We're down to 5'16", five, 5'10", five, five, before the snap. They are moving the ball, but in very small chunks. Blitz coming this time, though, and he's going to dodge around, tries to get away from one, but not everybody. Was well, the difference in you know reading that blitz? We've seen yep. Griffin Roberts a couple times, uh, you know, hit that hot receiver. Yep, and and stuff. And yeah, there's there's you, you got to know where to go with that. A, a run quarterback and a, and a passing quarterback. Griffin Roberts for Fossil, obviously not going to be the runner, but has that height and that vision. Knows where that that's coming from. As we watched uh, the uh, Crease kid from Fairview do that over and over again that right. night. Oh yeah, he killed. Yeah, he yeah, killed. Yeah. And Creighton Evans that time, nice tackle that time for the uh, Lampkins on the sack. Everhart rolls again to his right, evades a little pressure, fires downfield over the middle, dangerous pass, falls incomplete. Made it closer than I No, he did a great effort going for the ball. Could. Slow to get up there. Nice job by the Lampkins helping him up. Yeah, that was, that was, a, that was a tough get to try to go find that ball that time. Uh, Dana Bila, number 44. Yeah, Fairview's quarterback, Crease, he just killed, he just killed a... Uh, yeah, that was a clinic that night, watching that go on against Pooter. We're going to have them next week against Rocky. Fourth and 11 now. Obviously going to go for it. Need to get past the 40-yard line. The Indians do. No blitz. Only three rushing. Everard does get away. Turns it up field. He's going to get the first down. What a great run. Yeah. Pays for it, but uh, you know what? Well worth it. Down to the 38. Just a good athlete. I mean, he's your he's your prototypical high school quarterback you know yep. he beat you a couple of ways and uh, trying to do what he does best that time obviously taking off on the run Lampkins though like I said they get to him he does get the first down but uh, coming up on four minutes left here clock still running and they've only gained about 30 yards 40 yards last score we had on Rocky and Horizon was scoreless big game down there Two back set for protection this time. Everhart's back to throw. Tries to look deep. No one around. Takes off. Puts it down. Run. Gets around a couple. Fakes out the linebackers. Gets the outside. Showing some speed. 
Steps out about the 15-yard line. some nice moves there. Yeah, it really was. He really uh, had well, somebody's feet crossed. And he actually he? tucked it under and, yeah. and ran it more like a running back that time. Yep. Yeah, there was no doubt that he wanted to put the uh, pretty much the team on his back on this drive. And kind of what he does is he, he goes back and reads everything, and then he... Yeah, it's almost like he's looking for the linebackers. As soon as he sees the back of their numbers, they're turned the other way, and he knows it's time to take off, and it's certainly working. Long run that time. Now rolls to his left, trying to look downfield. Got to be fake. a little tired, though. Yeah. Fires in the end zone just oh. out front. He had Kelly wide open. Yeah, Kel Kelly was just wide open. And then you talk about being tired there. Your mechanics kind of go a little bit. Your arm drops. Throws it out in front of him, incomplete. If it does stop the clock, boy, he had him. 3.38 left here in the fourth quarter. Second and 10 now, ball in the 15-yard line. Pump fake, quick out pattern. Nobody out there. Oh, boy. Well, they haven't done uh, Everhart any favors. No, that ball's a little short behind, but still could have been caught. And, you know, for his, uh, Dane Avila, for the, what he's done tonight, he's made great plays and hustle plays around there. But uh, I think he was trying to take that ball towards the end zone. So a timeout on the field by the Lampkins. We'll take one, too. Who wants more peas? Go away. Oh, Daddy hates pop-up ads. <laughs> Go more? away. Hashtag dinner time. Scroll forward. Choose selfie. No. Selfie. Scroll forward. Scroll forward. Scroll forward. Delete selfie. Go away. Then picture. Bookmark. No. Go away. No. no, post photo. Scroll up. Scroll forward. Hashtag Faster. gravy. Faster. Faster. The First Bank mobile app. Technology has never been so easy. So we're back here now, seeing if we can come up with a score of Rocky Horizon. Yeah, we're, that's a big, big conference game down there, Rocky. Well, they win that, and Fairview wins this week. We'll have two four and one yep. teams coming to town next. Not sure which night it is. Yeah, Rocky had the misfortune getting both Legacy and Horizon on the road this year in, in a in a pretty tough conference. No really monster favorite this year, but a lot of good teams, which we haven't had. Yeah. More Every depth, year. I would say, is right. Eberhardt rolls his left, fires the end zone, hits Kelly this time at the five-yard line. Good catch, and tackled right away. Good pace at the time. They actually flipped his feet around, got that ball up in the air, and threw a, threw a shot. I wonder uh, whose favorite quarterback. Yeah, Eberhardt, remember that number seven yeah, might number be. Number seven might be. Did get a tweet here. The uh, Rocky Mountain volleyball team did win tonight. Fourth and one. Fourth and one, and uh, we're talking actually fourth and goal, I think would be the phrase, because they're inside. Usually the uh, chain gang drops the uh, drops the sticks completely. It shouldn't be fourth down, it should be first down. Yeah, okay, now they got to change correctly. So okay. first down, goal to go. So at the end of the third quarter, we do have a rocky score. They are trailing seven to nothing. Pretty good defensive struggle down there. Lampkins on the blitz this time. Everhart steps away from one, tries to get it out of the other. Wow, gets away from the pressure. But he doesn't Still have to speed run away to get from Kyler Harpham he's runs He's got to get down. rid of that ball. Young yeah. man's got to. Yeah, that's a great point. He's falling in love with his legs here. Yeah. Didn't have anybody out there. He still should have just chucked it through the back of the end zone. Well, he actually had a guy streaking. And, Was it going to the if corner? He, if he could have let him, yeah, he would have been. But you still got to throw it away at some level. So second and goal to go back out to the 14-yard line. Ebar back, looks towards the end zone, fires, and the slot man's got him. Turns up field, tackled after inside the five-yard line. Back to where they were. Yeah, good pitch and catch that time. Reception by number 10 for the Indians. And again, working, Trey Flock. this is working to a T, uh, just like what Fort Collins wanted. Oh, yeah. It's, they got the ball with seven minutes left, or six minutes left. Said, okay, well, if you take six minutes to score, Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. You know, it doesn't really matter. You're, you're, you're up by 16. We just went under the two-minute mark, and uh, Loveland hasn't been able to put it in the end zone, although they've gained a lot of yardage. But not over that last inch they need to get for the touchdown. And he's going to get sacked again here. snowed under that time. And he was thinking he never touched the ground because he jumped right back up. They don't have that good eyes, I'll guarantee you, even it, if that did happen. That's a... 
That's a replay call. You don't, you're not going to see that in <coughs> real time. Well, he was. He was grabbed by the defender who just rolled him over like a wrestling move. The defender was on his back. And Eberhardt did pop up pretty quickly. I will honestly say I didn't follow him after. I just assumed he's going down. But a timeout's going to be taken by Loveland no matter what. And they'll come back with the ball to the 15. Wayne, everyone knows by now that Schrader's Country Stores have the best car washes around. They don't need to see you standing in the car wash explaining the undercarriage wash, the rocker panel spray, the protective finish application, and the jet dryer. No, Wayne, all you have to do is see the beautiful shine on my nice, clean car. No muss, no fuss, and I'm certainly not all wet. <laughs> you won't get soaked at Schrader Country Store car washes, just shiny clean. Yep. So we're back here now, minute 41 left. Lampkin's kind of cruising, trading touchdowns this half. I mean, they credit the Indians, competed to come back, got it to 28 to 25. And then a couple scores uh, again by the uh, Lampkins kind of put well, this the out key, the cruise again. The key was the, was the interception. Yeah. Return all the way down. I mean, that, that basically was the ball game in many ways. Yeah, Kyler Harpham uh, doing that a couple times this year. Big interception against Fossil Ridge to kind of seal that game. And uh, again tonight. Love your seniors, don't you, when you're a football coach or any athletic coach. Motion across the formation. Screen setup looks like fires it down. He's got the man open the end zone. Touchdown. Oh, it's dropped. Oh, my gosh. He had it and dropped it. What a great throw by Eberhardt that time. Aiden Eberhardt stepped up in the pocket. Probably about as good a ball as he's thrown all night. Put it right in his hits, chest. Hits him right in the numbers. And, I and think that's just, not the only one he's done no, this yeah, tonight either. And, and uh, he's, had, he's had some tough drops, and uh, that happens. But either way, that's a turnover on downs for the Lampkins now. And... Uh, the minute 34 left, and Loveland only has one timeout. I don't even know if they'd bother to use it. But it's a run, 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 and the game's going to be over. So just a short little dive into the line. Lovell is not going to take time out. They don't do it there, Randy. They're not going to, to bother to do it. I think that's just the smart play. So a three-yard gain. Thanks again to all of our sponsors here tonight. Stu stay tuned for tomorrow night, too. Harpin back in at quarterback now. Just a straight run. Wildcat offense, so we're not going to really try to make a too many things happen there. I know that, that that's that's the goal, and uh, just get that clock to go. Fullback give again, straight up the middle. Falls a tight splits too. That's what they're setting themselves up to not have anybody knife in and take a shot at the ball. And actually, it was not Harpin; it was Moyer at quarterback. My uh, battle with those numbers the Lampkins wearing tonight continues. It's just about over, David. Yeah, I'll retire Ofer again. If we're uh, lucky, we'll get. Fossil and Pooters, both are dark with the black numbers. Oh, I'm white. Somebody up. has to be white. Yeah, no, some, somebody's got to go with a lighter color. Fossil Ridge will be the away team tomorrow. Pooters, the home team. So this will be the last play of the game. Give again to the fullback. Just dives in the line, goes down, two hands over the ball. And this time's going to run out here at French Field. Lampkin's going to get away with a much needed win. <laughs> You know, as I said, the uh, kind of the difference in the game, Loveland was coming back. Loveland was doing a lot of things, and then the interception there returned down to the 10-yard line, took all the wind out of Loveland's sails, and even there at the end, they, were, they weren't able to score a touchdown, drop past the end zone. No, so solid, of, solid game for Moyer. Uh, solid Bostack. game for Bostack was Weaver a solid game, game obviously. Uh, uh, hard from... Does what he does. Yeah, I mean, they just – and this is the kind of team I believe that Coach Rice thought he had uh, that he hasn't really seen this year. And so very steady win, very steady game. And uh, Loveland drops to two and three, and now Fort Collins is two and three heading into conference play. So anyway, that's going to do it from here. And also our volleyball game, Foster Ridge beat Greeley West three sets to one to win that match. So thank you to Sam and Phil over there for carrying that game for us tonight.
tune in tomorrow Steven night. Steven Sports. As we see both teams going through the uh, congratulatory line. Yeah. Tomorrow night, Pooter and Fossil right here on this fine station. Stream and Sports will also be live tomorrow night on PSD Comcast Channel 10. And so you look at all the guys on uh, crutches trying to follow their team over yeah, as nope, they that's celebrate a team tonight. Yeah, great job and uh, nice job the Lampkins and uh, rewarding their students. Everybody, it's still a student body thing, isn't it? Yes, it is. So anyway, for Ethan Dayton, for David Haas, this is Randy McCoy, our final score. Fort Collins Lampkins, 41. Loveland Indians, 25. We'll see you tomorrow night. Pooter School District High School Football, live on Stream It Sports and PSD Channel 10, has been brought to you by Schrader Oil, your local fuel company. By UC Health, our roots run deep. By Peterson Toyota, everything cars made easy. And by First Bank, visit any of our convenient locations in Northern Colorado.